At uh, nine o'clock, it's time for a news update and it's over to Catherine Gaffney. Good morning, Catherine. Good morning, Greg. Significant changes are expected to the MICA redress scheme. Campaigners are hopeful the proposals for the long-awaited scheme will finally be ready by next Tuesday following several delays and weeks of negotiations. The enhanced scheme will be complex with improvements said to be timely and reasonable, according to comments made in the Dáil last night. Donegal Deputy Joe McHugh added that the scheme must be realistic too and says that homeowners must be afforded peace and hope in the run-up to Christmas. Maybe we could add to timely, reasonable and consistent. Maybe we could throw in realistic as well. It has to be realistic. The previous scheme was not the scheme uh, that certainly I signed up to. Lastly, and by no means least, the homeowners who are hearing those cracks grow louder on a stormy night in the middle of the winter, they have to be allowed something that I certainly used to take for granted, and that is peace. Peace of mind and peace to face into their first Christmas in a decade. Responding on behalf of the Housing Minister, Minister Malcolm Noonan gave reassurances that the work undertaken to get the scheme right has been phenomenal. And again, uh, taking on board the points you make about uh, dedicated staffing within the department, the local me mechanisms for delivery and the trust ar around earning trust and the homeowners at the centre of this scheme, that's what we're trying to achieve. I know there's other issues being raised in the Dáil about modular bills and affordability and I think those are for another day, but I do think, um, just to reassure you, Deputy, that the, the, the work that has been put into this has been uh, phenomenal by our department and by the Minister himself. The head of the HSE says he fully appreciates restrictions on children are difficult. Now, it's advising against indoor community gatherings for under 12s, including parties, communions and sleepovers. It's also recommending that children over nine wear masks in schools, on public transport and in shops. HSC CEO Paul Reid says children attending hospitals with respiratory related illnesses is having an impact on the health system. We were assessing the emergency attendances to our children's hospitals in the period of October to early November. And if you compare with 2019, which would be the year before the pandemic, there are about 11,700 presentations in that five week period. In the equivalent five week period this year in 2021, there are almost 20,000 presentations. So it's a 70% increase. And it will be towards the end of December before COVID-19 vaccines will be rolled out to children aged between 5 and 11. It's expected the jabs will be administered through HSE vaccine centres. A final recommendation from NIACS likely in the coming days following yesterday's approval by the EMA. John Boyle from the Teachers Union, the INTO, says he's optimistic parents will opt to get their children vaccinated. Within three weeks, if I recall, um, over 62% of the children in post-primary schools had been vaccinated. So, you know, there, there's obviously um, a, a window here for parents to familiarise themselves. And I know that uh, on balance, that the decision was strongly in favour of um, providing access to the vaccine for children of that age group. Weather now, a cold, windy day with temperatures of 6 to 9 degrees. There will be widespread showers, heavy at times and falling as sleet and snow over hills and mountains. We're back with more 10. Until then, good morning. It's not just that Sammy has lost his home in the conflict. It's not just that everyone he's ever loved is gone and he's been forced to walk hundreds of miles alone to find safety. And most of all, it's not just that Sammy is only seven years old. Like thousands of children in regions torn apart by conflict, Sammy is living in fear and it's not just. This Christmas, your love can make all the difference. Visit trocra.org or call 1850 408 408. Trocra, until love conquers fear. Today's 9 till noon show is brought to you in association with Ulster Tires. Get your tires ready for winter. Call in to Ulster Tires in Letterkenny and Bally Buffet today. And now it's time for the talk of the Northwest. The 9 to noon show with Greg Hughes on Highland Radio. 
Hello, a very good morning to you. It's just turning five minutes past nine on this uh, Friday the 26th of November. I hope you're well and uh, hopefully you're with us now for the next three hours on the programme. We have a busy one for you, of course. Uh, we're going to be looking at the big stories of the day and the week with our panel very, very shortly. Also after 11, we will be uh, having uh, Michael and Fanula in studio easing us into the weekend talking all things entertainment and lots more uh, in between. Right, so let's introduce our guests uh, for you now this morning we can say good morning first to uh independent deputy thomas pringle thomas good morning to you morning greg how are you it's good to have with you i'm fine thank you uh fianna fall councillor liam blaney good morning to you liam i don't know if it's liam muted there is he uh mm. or we can also hopefully say good morning to independent uh oh liam good morning to you can you hear me yeah, here you are. Good morning to you and Sharon and Thomas. The Cahirlock <laughs> might accept that kind of tardy on muting at council <laughs> meetings, but not on this program, uh, Councillor. <laughs> I'm glad that I'm glad that you've agreed to, to unmute me this morning. <laughs> Thank. You. And uh, also, Independent Senator, and last but not least, of course, uh, Sharon Keown. Good morning, Sharon. Good morning to you, Greg, and good morning to your listeners. It's great to have you on the programme for the first time. And in fact, uh, I'll start with you, Sharon, if that's OK, uh, because okay. I think what a lot of people are talking about at school, at work, at home, is the news today that children under 12 have been told to avoid indoor gatherings for the next two weeks under new recommendations from NEFIT Chief Medical Officer Tony Houlihan. Uh, his team advised that children should not attend birthday parties, nativity plays, communions, sleepovers or indoor play dates while the level of COVID-19 transmissions uh, continues to surge. They're also recommending that all children over the age of nine should wear masks on public transports and in shops, while they'll also be necessary for pupils in primary schools from third class upwards. And of course, too, NIAC will be considering advice to extend the vaccination uh, to uh, our younger population. Uh, what do you think of this, Sharon? <laughs> I think um, I'm disappointed to hear it, to, to tell you the God's honest truth. I'm disappointed to, to, to hear that our government have failed the people of Ireland again for another winter. Um, it, they're expecting us to carry uh, to carry the, the HSC through again because they have failed miserably to uh, manage our, our HSC and our hospitals and failed to invest over the last 18, 19 months. We knew it was coming. We knew the virus wasn't going to go away. There's no way, and I think people have got to got to got to grips with that. That this virus is going nowhere. Um, and already this morning they're talking about the B one one five two nine, a new South African uh, Botswana COVID virus. So there's new variants coming all of the time, and um, it's important that we get out in front of it. We have failed to do that. The, the rollout of the booster vaccines should have been coming much earlier. Um, they failed. To, they only started the, them in, no, in November. So unfortunately now, the target is now the children, um, having children wearing masks, and particularly for children with um, disabilities, that's going to be very, very challenging, and for the for the, the school teachers as well. So having children wearing masks in school over the age of nine, they're going to have to wear them in public out, uh, indoor spaces, in the shops, right up until mid-February, and that might even be extended out again. I don't want to, so, just, just on that, I, I wouldn't want to alarm any parents. I, I can't, I, I'd imagine if a child has difficulty, for whatever reason, the same as adults, uh, in wearing a mask, they won't be compelled to do so, uh, Senator. Well, well, a, a, absolutely. I mean, there has, to be, there has to be medical reasons there, but you know, young children they, do, they they might keep the masks on for a certain period of time but they, they they do take them down so it's very hard to 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 police that in in a classroom so it's going to be very very difficult and very very challenging for for the school teachers um but it seems so, the teachers are are keen on it they're they're keen well, uh, i mean you can see i mean look at there definitely there is community spread there within within our schools and you know we were told very very early on that our schools were going to be safe, that they were the safest environment because children were not going to be uh, infected. And th there's 4,000 schools in this country. The state have funded 13 ventilators, those heap of vent ventilators, 13 of them. They, they just are not out in front of this at all. They're not taking it very, very seriously and they have to invest in ventilation. Having children in schools with windows open, getting colds, getting get, uh, it, it, particularly through the next couple of months between right from right now to right up to, to it's not on. It's absolutely not on. So you feel that they're, they're too reactionary and not proactive? Absolutely. They, they haven't been proactive. You cannot say that this government has acted in a proactive way in relation 
to handling COVID. But They're we, not living with COVID. Dare I even say that horrible phrase, we are where we are. Uh, all that being said, what are your views, though, on... Uh, you know, I think you've, you've you've conceded that it's clear there is spread in schools. Um, do you think that we should allow that to happen or take mitigating measures like uh, rolling out a, a, a diluted vaccine for uh, younger people and asking them to wear masks in, in, in the school environment? You know, we can't change where we're at now. Do you think that's an appropriate response to try and get some sort of a handle on this through the winter? <laughs> I, I, I'm 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 reluctant reluctant to to give advice on uh, on the vaccines for children because I don't know enough about giving vaccines for for children at this moment in time. So yes, the the, the vaccine was approved yesterday at the at, for the five to eleven year olds. Um, that is it, it's allegedly going to be rolled out in schools in early early New Year. Um, how that's going to be rolled up, I. I rolled out, I don't know whether it's going to be in the schools or whether it's going to be through the, the HSC uh, medical centres. Um, but I suppose we, ha- we, we have to deal with the issue. The issue is the rising cases. Mm. The issue is that we have to reduce our contacts. That is the key. Yeah. And a lot of people over the last couple of weeks have been doing that. It's, I've noticed it. A lot of retailers have noticed it. And also a lot of retailers have to get in front of it as well. I, I see a lot of retailers are not as good as they were with regard to the hand sanitizing, so that is something that they need to get in, get in, uh, get in front of as well. They need to be having their hand sanitizer right out, outside their premises, uh, so people have that that they literally have to walk into it uh, uh, to get inside that door. Hand sanitization is really, really important, and mask wearing over this over this next couple of months is really, really important. Yeah, I think to your sort of hesitancy on the the vaccine question is probably going to be reflective of of how people feel and and what the the decisions they're going to have to be making themselves for their for their young people um we'll come to you next deputy thomas prinkle if that's okay i mean obviously you know and we, we've talked about it an awful lot about you know maybe in action or things we could have done different to avoid being where we are but we are in this situation at the moment are you in favor of uh, third class and above wearing masks uh, you know, there's a huge football game, for example, in the Aviva. Uh, I think it's a record attendance expected for a uh, for a cup game. And uh, at the same time, we're sort of saying to young people, uh, don't go to or don't take part in a nativity play. Uh, what's your views on it all? <laughs> yeah, I think I think at the in the Aviva as well, they've recommended that um, masks should be worn at all outdoor gatherings as well, too, which is um, very important. Look. Yeah, you're right in saying, Greg, that we are where we are. Um, I wouldn't have started off here, but we are here now, and we did, the measures do need to be put in place. Um, I think that the NAFID have recommended um, mask wearing for children up to for between nine and thirteen. I think it is. So, I mean, I think that in that case, it should be done. I um, mean, I think parents know that uh, it needs to be done to control the, control the virus. The highest rates we have now are amongst children because everybody, the vaccination. Rate are so high everywhere else that the virus has to is, is uh, infecting children mostly. You know, and it's a bit it's a bit rich of the government to say that um, schools aren't infectious when we're banning everything else the children go to, but saying that schools are grand. Like, you know, that doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. And I think everybody knows that doesn't make sense. Are you confident so, that when you know you say Neffet have recommended this, so that we need to go with it, right? And I, I'm, I'm just this is for conversational purposes. I'm not expressing a view here that they are balancing everything. That they're balancing the impact in my have on them uh, emotionally, mentally, um, in terms of, you know, I, I don't know if, if it might make them all prone to catch other yeah. respiratory illness. We don't know that. Uh, uh, and I'm not trying to scaremonger, but, you know, like, I'm not saying you have blind faith in Neffet, but are you confident in sort of saying, well, if that's what they're saying we need to do, are you sure that they're not only thinking, right, how do we stop the spread of this? Because we were saying schools were very safe, you know. We were saying the virus wasn't really spreading in schools. Are they covering their arse, if you pardon the phrase, or are you confident that they have reviewed everything and this is not going to actually be detrimental to our young people? 
I think I think it's a combination of both, Greg. I think they have reviewed everything. You would hope they have reviewed everything anyway, because they take so long making decisions. That hopefully it's because that they're actually reviewing the evidence and, and making that, making that decision on it. You'd have to say that Method are more qualified than me to make a decision in relation to um, whether school children should wear masks or not. But I think the other side of that is that I think always the um, the decision was made that children should stay at school because it's better for children to be at school than to have schools closed down. And it's not that school, I don't think anyway, personally, it's not that schools were any more safer or anything like that, but you have to weigh the risks and for children's development and for children's uh, well-being and something out there. But you, you, you say that you don't know as, as well as Neffet, and of course there are doctors and medics and what have you, but do you not think, say for instance, just for argument's sake, we could really have given antigen testing in schools a real go of it, uh, you know, and that in, in and of itself is quite intrusive, of course, although, you know, it's, it's a nasal swab. It's not up the back of your uh, brain like, like, the, like the PCR. But could we not have tried that first and then sort of see if that can control it and then move to, to, to the masking? Well, the thing about it is, I think I think the masking is probably less intrusive, and I think the masking actually works better. Okay. Um, because I mean, you know, the, the problem with the antigen testing uh, all along, and I kind of would, would agree with Nevin in relation to antigen testing, is that it's been used in the wrong way. It's been presented as being the solution to all the problems when it's not. It's, it's actually part of the it's like mask wearing and washing your hands. It's part of the suite of overall uh, defenses we have against it. We should have against it, and. Um, that's I think that that's the reality. So I, I think mask wearing is probably less intrusive overall um, than uh, nasal swabs for young children. And um, you know, and I th- partly the, I think the government's resistance to actually put, rolling out the antigen widespread antigen testing is because that they they want they they won't, don't want to have to pay somebody to actually give the test as well. Like and you know, and the, the thing of saying that it's up to us to make our own to do the test ourselves. Mm-hmm. As far as I know, in, in other European countries, and that's there people actually do the test for you. It's free and it's and, and you get as many tests as you want, but somebody actually does the test rather than relying on it to do, do it yourself. Yeah, all right. Uh, Councillor Liam Blaney, I suppose, you know, on, on the same two topics there, uh, uh, in terms of, you know, asking our young people or for enforcing mask wearing. And as, you know, I, I would hope that if a child is, is very uncomfortable wearing a mask or for medical reasons they can't, or if they can't adjust it themselves, they'd, they'd be, uh, they, they wouldn't have to. Uh, and, and also, I suppose, the rolling out of vaccines uh, to, to the younger population. What's your views on both? Well, like Thomas said there, Greg, um, I definitely wouldn't have the same knowledge as, as Neffet would have. And Although it was said there about uh, that had been said about the schools that they were safe for children, but there's not many different variants of this strain um, spreading out across the community. And I, I suppose it's come to the stage now where we're going to be asking the young ones to to wear the mask for a couple of weeks. And and I think it helps uh, to stop the spread of it. Whether it is the children wearing the masks at school, and there, there will be children that can't wear the mask at school, and they will be allowed. I'm, I'm quite sure. Have to have good enough reasons for it. Uh, as far as the as far as the vaccination is concerned, they don't have to take a vaccination either. If the parents feel that they don't want to give it to them, but uh, I'm quite sure that a lot of parents would add that their children are get the vaccination as well. At the same time, it will be another another element to help to to fight this this pandemic and, and try and keep the numbers down. Uh, there's a lot of other information out there, you know. I mean, uh, uh, some of it is is actual, you know, practicing medical people with a, a practice and, and patients and stuff. A lot of it is just you know, bits and pieces shared from the internet, though it does plant seed. Uh, and I think we've seen that particularly with pregnant women. It does sound, uh, uh, plant a, a strong seed of doubt. I imagine it's going to be really ramped up that other uh, information as the the uh, as we get a date for the rollout of the vaccine to the younger people, uh, councillor. Yeah, I'm quite sure it will. Again, <clears throat> as you rightly said, it has been um, different versions uh, put out uh, as we went through the the, the program of vaccination already, and I'm quite sure the same will happen now whenever we're talking about the children getting it. But as we've seen from the 90 percent of the population that has already got the vaccination. Uh, I'm quite sure that they will encourage the children uh, to to uh, take up the same, and hopefully we'll have something around the same kind of uh, 
percentage of young people that will uh, be accept the vaccination where it's available for them. All right, we'll have more from Councillor Liam Blaney, uh, Senator Sharon Keown and um, Deputy Thomas Pringle after the break. Just to remind you to get involved in the conversation, WhatsApp or text us 0866025000, 0866025000 or call Caroline on 0749125000. If you're watching us across our social media, feel free uh, to comment there on uh, YouTube and Facebook as well. We have a short break to take. We'll be back uh, with much more in just a couple of moments. Today's Nine Till Noon show is brought to you in association with Ulster Tires. Get your tires winter ready. Drop in to Ulster Tires in Letterkenny and Bally Buffet today. Concerts are back. Join me, David James, for a night of the stars in concert on Thursday the 2nd of December in the Strand Hotel Ballyliffin. Featuring Robert Mazel, Patrick Feeney, Trudy Lawler, Jim Devine and Shauna McStravis. Tickets 20 euros available from hotel reception or by phoning 074-937-6107. A night of the stars in concert Thursday the 2nd of December, the Strand Hotel Ballyliffin. Don't miss the crazy Black Friday deals right now at Watson Hire in Letterkenny. Up to 70% off the recommended retail price on hand and power tools, paint, homeware, clothing and much more. Many are at clearance prices that won't be repeated. Loads of great present ideas now reduced. That's amazing Black Friday deals right now at Watson Hire, Kiltoy Letterkenny. Visit watsonhire.ie or see Facebook for daily offers. Things are deteriorating quickly here in DRC. It's now the biggest hunger crisis the world has ever seen and 3.4 million children are on the brink of survival. Concerned staff are working around the clock, but we desperately need more supplies. Your gift will save lives. Visit concern.net and send life-saving food today. Thank you. Are you tired of waiting for treatment or surgery? Did you know you can receive immediate treatment across the border under the new NI planned healthcare scheme at potentially no cost? Donegal patients are still being treated with us at Kingsbridge Private Hospital Northwest post Brexit. The process is easy and our dedicated team will help guide you through it. So why wait? Contact us today to find out how you can skip the waiting lists and receive treatment in Northern Ireland. Visit kingsbridgeprivatehospital.com because life matters. What do you give someone who has everything? Everything, because that's what you get with an Aldi gift card. Choose from delicious Christmas food and drink, or even our legendary Aldi special buys. Values range from 10 euro to 500 euro. It's perfect for loved ones, and it shows them just how gifted you are. Purchase in store or buy online. Aldi, make Christmas amazing for everyone. Terms apply, visit aldi.ie forward slash gift cards for details. At Letterkenny Shopping Centre, we're already dreaming about the festive season, so why not make a start, park for free and enjoy your Christmas shopping this year. Letterkenny Shopping Centre, bringing you the time at... Uh, the time's 22 minutes past nine. You're very welcome back to the Nine Till Noon show. Just a quick word on news yesterday that a double bank holiday is on the cards for St Patrick's Day. The Tonish just said... Uh, which would mark two years since the pandemic began. Leo Varadkar said that March 17 and 18 uh, could both be bank holidays for a four-day weekend in 2022, with the new bank holiday moving to an earlier date for St Bridget's Day in 2023. Uh, Senator Sharon Keown, do you think that's uh, an appropriate sort of thank you to our frontline staff, many of which will have to work uh, over those uh, days? And if the truth be told, it's really um, its employers it's employers that uh, pay the pay the price, isn't it? It's not. Uh, it's not the state. Absolutely, it it is it is employers that are going to have to uh, front the cost of uh, these bank holidays. Um, yes, it, it is nice to have one more national holiday. I would like to see it being St Bridget's Day, uh, the first of February, to mark the the, the spring, um, and to mark St Bridget herself. Um, so, yes, I would welcome that particular day being a bank holiday going forward. And uh, just uh, the significance of if it becomes St. Bridget's Day annually, uh, the first time I think uh, 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 we have a, a public holiday Female. in the name of a woman, is that significant? Well, it is significant. I think it's significant for the women in Ireland because we've never actually had uh, any day dedicated towards a woman in Ireland. Mm -hmm. And uh, St. Bridget obviously has been a patriarchal figure. She's been a Christian figure. And uh, um, yes, it's someone that... Someone that 
Uh, we all know, uh, all the children in the school know her, all, 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 everybody throughout this nation knows who St. Bridget uh, is, and uh, and she would have been a good representative to women uh, you know, in her time in history. So yes, I, I would welcome uh, that particular day turning into a bank holiday. Yeah, Councillor uh, Liam Blaney, do you think it's an, a, a, a fitting tribute to our frontline staff, um, a, an extra bank holiday or public holiday, I suppose? It's got nothing to do with the banks really anymore. Well, they, they deserve it, yes, certainly. But I think it should be a financial contribution as well because mm. it's not just towards the, the staff that give so much service um, over the, the pandemic. Everybody's going to enjoy this bank holiday. And I think they should be acknowledged with something different and, and something that be kind of financial boost for for uh, that same weekend. Because they kind of got themselves in a bit of a, a stick, really, by letting it leak that they were considering something. You know, I mean, yes. they had to let it die down for quite some time before they started talking about a bank holiday. But, you know, it was going to be financial. It was costed. Do you remember all that conversation? Uh, and Not obviously too. they, they yeah. buried that. Absolutely, the buried, the buried because there was too many. There was too many looking for it at that stage. The, the guardy were coming out, the nurses were coming out, the doctors were coming out. Everybody was coming out looking for this contribution. Um, and then, how could so, you exclude? How could you exclude then those that you were also teachers, working in our teachers, retail teachers, and stuff? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you cannot you, you cannot ex exclude anybody. Even those the haulage drivers who are bringing our, our foods to the supermarkets, uh, the farmers. You cannot exclude anybody. So the idea of uh, of a, a contribution, a financial contribution, was probably a little bit ridiculous in the first place because it wasn't a feasible uh, suggestion. So a lot, very little thought when did that in the very beginning. So they're going to have to look at it other ways that they might be able to 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 um, to support those workers that uh, have really been the, on the front line over the last uh, twenty months. Yeah, and before I bring Thomas and Liam back to you, though, I mean, you know, this should. Really, what I presume what what particularly those in the health service have done, and this is no disrespect to everyone else that's worked really hard, but you know, there's people in the health service that have had they haven't had five consecutive days off in in, in five uh, days. This should really have been a catalyst to sort of have a a, a, a proper look at, at at particularly conditions, um, if if not wages for our health workers, Liam. Well, you did talk about leaks there, and I, I, I'm not aware of this being announced yet. I know no, it was submitted um, again, but sorry, Liam. In case I was confused, this was going back about I don't know how long. It's about two months. It was all being costed, and they were saying it would cost this much, it would cost that much, and so yeah. so that's that that's history now. Um, but but do you think this should have been a catalyst really to look at the conditions, particularly maybe even the pay of our health uh, care workers, seeing as we've seen firsthand what they do? Well, first of all, I still think that they can. We all know what the frontline workers are. I think they can be defined. And you could take on everybody if you wanted. But I think to, uh, the reality is that we do know there were frontline workers out there during the whole pandemic. And I do still do think that they should be get some kind of reward financially. But if that is ruined out, um, I do believe what, you, what you're talking about, uh, the, the conditions and their pay can be looked at both. Mm. And hopefully maybe on the same same weekend or before that weekend, some kind of announcement made that that they intend to prove them and prove both their conditions and the pay, All especially right. with healthcare workers. Yeah, Deputy Pringle. Yeah, I think the pandemic has shown what really are essential workers, and um, it would be the bankers and the, everybody else would be very disappointed to see what's classed as essential workers now in our society. And I do think that they, they need to be um, acknowledged. But I think it could be better acknowledged by actually sorting out the health services and making the health, making the health service uh, work for everybody. Um, and it could be better organised by actually increasing the minimum wage to the living wage. And um, that would be vitally important because most of, most of our essential workers are actually minimum wage workers and um that's you know so look on, on the idea of the bank holiday i, I think st bridges day being a bank holiday is a part and I, I think it is significant too that st bridges is, would be the only woman that would be recognized in relation to uh bank holiday but, but an extra day off in february though like well february down. would be a great day like i mean that's probably if we could if we could change st bridges day maybe till July, that would be ideal. And then we could have the best of both worlds. What we could have the bank holiday. What do you think of that, Sharon? We'll mark it, say, but we're going to have to do it later in the year. I, I, I suppose it's always been the first February. It's always been that day. I mean, it would be slightly ridiculous to change to change it into the middle of May. Or, but you're saying that you could do something in May. But we already have a holiday bank holiday in May. It's very hard to know when to have a bank holiday. But we don't have one between, uh, between I think, January and St. Patrick's Day. So... 
yeah, I think it'd be a, it'd be a, a, a good time to have a di- have a bank holiday. For we sure. actually we actually have less bank holidays in both, than all other European countries as well. Absolutely. Like, yeah. and, and you know, so the, that's not that it's going to be an onerous cost or anything like that. Like, I mean, the next thing we'll have is all business people are going out. Oh, you can't have a bank holiday because it's going to be so much cost and all that. You know what? It's not going to be, and it's and and and, ter- and European standards were well below the average in terms of bank holidays as well. Uh, but more to the point, though, as it marks, you know, is it a, is it an appropriate thank you? I'm just wondering what uh, nurses and doctors and and others in uh, on the front line think. In that, you know, like you know, we all have someone in our lives. I presume that works in retail. They're going to have to work on that day, for example. And I'm sure, you know, the entire health service can't take that day off. And yes, maybe they might get it in lieu down the line. But really, is it, you know, it might make the country sort of go, yep, that's that's fantastic because everyone benefits. But really, is it, I don't know, I haven't spoken to enough people that are affected by this to sort of, because uh, it's their opinions that count. But what's your gut feeling, Thomas? Well, <laughs> Look, uh, no matter, no, there's nothing you could do that that everybody will benefit from it. Like even on Christmas Day, people work on Christmas Day, and they're they're not benefiting from Christmas Day. You know, so I mean, I think a bank holiday is appropriate, but I think it shouldn't be the only thing. I think the government has picked a bank holiday because it's the least impact that they can do. And, um, you know, and what what really should be the tribute to the pandemic and tribute to the, the people who have passed away during the pandemic is to sort out the health services and to actually pay people who are on work, minimum wage workers an actual living wage. I think that would be a real thing that they could actually point to, you know, that this pandemic has been worthwhile. The big problem we've seen through, all through this pandemic now is that the government is going to revert back to type um, and they're going to say that the, the last two years haven't happened and we're going back they're going back to to cuts and and that as well like when when we've seen how during the pandemic things weren't an issue things weren't a problem because they had to be sorted out like we didn't have a homeless issue during the pandemic what, but we're going to, we're going rapidly back to that again now because the government has decided now that the main thing to do is to cut down and borrow like, uh, Liam, you know, Liam, it's, it's discouraging isn't it that you know we do have problems that we for generations we don't seem to be able to fix yet many problems can be fixed very very quickly with the stroke of a pen or or what have you during during the pandemic you know i, I mean it would be do you i mean as thomas says we'll probably revert pro- post pandemic but again you know we're all going to be changed when we come out of this wouldn't it be useful maybe if how we govern was changed somewhat well some things you know <clears throat> You can't just with a stroke of a pen, and, and some people will try to make it out. And I know some people before they get into into a uh at all promise what they would do with a stroke of a pen and what could be done with a stroke of a pen. And I see some of them on there, Samson, haven't done very much since they were done. Are any of them on this call? <laughs> no, no, no. And I've, I've been with Thomas for quite a while. And, and <laughs> Don't, the council, first of all. you're not talking about me. No, no, <laughs> no I'm not talking about me. I didn't get a lens that pen at all. <laughs> Yeah, but I, do know, I do know locally, I'm talking about locally here, where, the, okay. uh, where it was told that things could be done with a stroke of a pen, and there's people there on there a long time since, since they said that, and they didn't do what they said could be done with a stroke of a pen. So look, it's easy to say that um, things could be done with a stroke of a pen, although we did see during the pandemic where things was done near enough with a stroke of a pen. Um, then further in the line, but, 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 quite... but 40 million, 40 billion was spent in the last 20 months in the health service. 40 billion euro. And they haven't fixed anything. They've done nothing. 40 billion that this nation is going to be paying for. And nothing. And here we are again. And and what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks? Back back, back on the pop payment, back on the CRIS, back on the EWSS. But the only thing about that, the only thing about that, Sharon, and it's probably even worse than what you propose, some might feel, in that businesses, hotels, you know, uh, hairdressers, all these businesses, restaurants, are seeing people cancel their their uh, bookings. You know, they're seeing um, their their order sheets empty, and because it's being done this way, the government is not having to 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 increase support or pay the pup. You know, it's almost actually worse than if they did close them and support them and support their staff. Well, it'll be interesting to see what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks and what the guidelines are going to come out from the the NEFID recommendations in the government. I, I do believe that there's going to be changes within, certainly between now and, and the, the 13th of December. Mm. Um, I definitely believe that the, the cases are, we'd like to think, like to get the cases down, but 
the trajectory is not going in that way at this moment in time. But it's not going um, up either, though. It, it's, it's not going up either, but the, the hospital case in the ICU is obviously very, very important. Mm. The ICU beds are really where, where, where the figures you need to be watching. And we are at the, uh, just uh, 100, I think it was 150 yesterday, 122. 126. 126, 126. So we have, we have, I think it's 297 beds in the country. Three thirty. Um, it, it's three thirty. No, no. I think. I think, I think he actually. It can be. It, it, can, be actually, it can be surged up to three thirty at the moment. I believe. Yeah. yeah I think he actually uh, announced this week that they're uh, funding for extra beds there. Mm. So I, th- I thought he was bringing it up to two two ninety seven. Now there's no talk about uh, uh, the private health service this year. Last year they uh, secured contracts with the various private hospitals to uh, access uh, 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 ICU beds. Mm. There's no talk about that. There that, is. That in, fairna- in fairness, Senator, we, 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 are, we, we, have, we have access to, to the... Uh, and we are actually using quite a few beds in private hospitals at the moment. I'm not contradicting you just for the sake of it. I yes. hope you don't believe I am, but I do know yes. that they have they have arrangements in place where needed there. Uh, but that, obviously that's not going to fix everything. But that, well, that's yeah, certainly you know. not going to fix it, but it should have been fixed. They had 20 months to fix it. They knew this was not going to go away. They knew it in 2020. Uh, 2020. They knew it in 2021. This is a failure to act on their part. It is nothing else. And, and and what's going to happen? Do you think things are going to be different in 2022? It's 305 ICU beds, by the way. So, uh, part, part, 305. 305. All right. So, okay. well, so I was I was quite near it then. Yeah, you were indeed. So uh, <laughs> right, just, okay. to, just to be absolutely okay. uh, after, absolutely we've fair. Had a, Thomas? We've had, the huge, the way, we've had the huge benefit of growing that by 50 beds since the pandemic started. I mean, and that's the height of the ambition that the government has. Um, so, And that's, that's Sharon's right. The last two years are going to be lost. Because the any benefits are going to, we're going to, we're not going, we're not going to see them, and what really what we should be doing is we should be looking at what worked over the last two years and making that permanent, and um, you know solving the homeless crisis over the last two years make that permanent. But what this government is going to do is we're going to revert back to type mm-hmm. and go revert back to um, making it ever, everything basically like the two, last two years haven't happened and what's been very interesting over the last couple of weeks uh, the, yeah but the last couple of weeks or so within the, the whole pandemic thing that the, the government has shifted the whole thing around to it's our fault and it's our responsibility to actually sort out things it's our responsibility to to make sure that the, the pandemic doesn't increase and as if the government has no responsibility at all in relation to this it's actually very interesting how, they, how they've done that and um, you know but Councillor Blaney I mean it's easy to say these things in opposition, though. Is that how you feel that, you know, when you're in there, you have to make the tough decisions? You know, you have to, you know, like we have a hundred and we have 127 uh, vacancies at Letterkenny University Hospital. You know, those jobs are there. They're advertised. They're funded. You know, a hundred and I think it's 127 might be 126. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I presume, you know, the government would say, we're we're doing what we can. It's it's trying to get people p- p- people to take up these jobs. Well, it's easy to be a populist and, and throw out everything that sounds good and all all the sound bites and everything else. But the, the reality for decisions to be made, and I'm not on there having to make any of them decisions as far as government is concerned. But I see it in the council, and the same people that opposes everything at once, everything at the same time. But I'm saying that you know, uh, I think it's 127 vacancies there is in in, in, in the Kenny Hospital and. You know, it was astonishing to hear that. That kind of figure is there. It hasn't been there. It hasn't just come overnight. It's been there for quite a while. I'm quite sure, maybe building up over over a period of time. But uh, that Kenny Hospital seriously needs a, a, a real look at because, as we said, I think it was yesterday. It was the most overcrowded hospital again in the country yesterday, mm. and uh, there's a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of uh, um, both money and capital uh, to need to be spent although we have the private hospital coming to letter kenny i think it's going to be hopefully get get up and going uh next year or, or start the building on it but uh the serious capital needed uh to um provide uh, a lot more at letter kenny hospital than what is already there and, and the staff is there is under huge pressure and because of us so little or so many people that is are so many um vacancies there and i think if uh I think vacancies were starting to be filled. We could see maybe a bit of and pressure as far as staffing is concerned, and hopefully with the private hospital coming in there and the uh, the extra workers coming in, that the the staff will will get things a bit easier, and we'll see improvements hopefully as far hopefully. as. Uh, now, Thomas Pringle, I don't know if you're praying or you're disagreeing. What what was something? Um, 
I mean, to say that the private hospital coming into Letterkenny is a solution, I mean, that shows you how bad the government decision making and government responsible is. You know, so so a private hospital coming into Letterkenny is going to be a great, a great pro- sign of progress. I think that's depressing. I think that's the private private hospital will only be accessible to people who can afford to pay for it. Um, but it does know, it does it not make it a more attractive proposal for for for, for certain medical professionals? to move here because they can also do some work in this 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 facility now sorry I, I didn't mean I didn't mean a private hospital it's the nursing there. home you're talking they, they, about you know, it's, yes, it's the, 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 the community the, hospital the whole community, the yeah. community hospitals come like again I think it will be I was a place where, there, where yeah. people can where people yeah, can gosh. promote can, can people can can be coming come right after the operation step, step, down, step down beds and what yeah, right. exactly okay, right okay, yeah, that's right, okay. yeah. The step, step down beds and that uh, makes sense yes okay we can we, think, we can agree on that so i can take a break <laughs> okay um we're going to hear more from um, deputies Thomas uh, Pringle, uh, Senator Sharon Keown. We'll go to after, straight after the break and Councillor Liam Blaney. Today's Nine Tone In show is brought to you in association with Ulster Tires. Are your tires ready for winter? Call into Ulster Tires in Letterkenny and Bally Buffet today. Anne had been training hard for months, 7K most evenings in all weathers, along familiar tree lined roads. Only for that wind to be close to my fastest time ever. Just what I need, a fallen tree. Okay, climb over, keep moving. Always ask yourself the question. Are you sure it's safe? Never approach fallen wires. Stay safe, stay clear of electricity wires. For emergencies, call 1-800-372-999. ESB Networks, serving all electricity customers. Candles, lanterns, Christmas trees, decorations and all types of lights. Everything you need for Christmas. Experience the magic of Christmas at Cooney's. Our biggest and best Christmas shop has outstanding value on lights and trees. There really is something for everyone at Cooney's Letterkenny Retail. Park. Something exciting is happening at Dunn Stores. The Dunn Stores Christmas Millionaire Draw is now on, with winners in every store every week. For our grand prize, one lucky shopper will become our Dunn Stores Christmas Millionaire, winning 1 million value club card points. That's your shopping for the whole year worth €10,000. Simply come in store and swipe your value club cards to enter. Swipe and win today with the Dunn Stores Christmas Millionaire Draw. Terms and conditions apply. See dunnstores.com for details. Black Friday weekend at Brian McCormick Sports. 20% off clothing and footwear. Check in store for details. Asics, New Balance and On Footwear. Save 20% on Black Friday weekend. Clothing from all the top brands. Adidas, LS and Under Armour. Kids tracksuits, hoodies and bottoms. 20% off this Black Friday weekend. In store and online at bmcsports.ie. Hi, Theresa Mannion here with a road safety alert for bad weather. Black ice is one of winter's biggest hazards and is hard to see. Watch out for sheltered or shaded areas on the road, under trees and near high walls. Visit rsa.ie from the Road Safety Authority. Looking to gift your staff this Christmas? Why not spoil them with a McElhenney's gift card? For corporate packages, call us on 074 9131217. McElhenney's Bally Buffet for the Dreamers this Christmas. Open Sundays 1.30 to 6pm or shop online with free next day delivery at McElhenney's.com. Homeland Fuel Offers, keeping you warm for less. 20kg Eco Bright, buy 5 bags for €50. Euro. Softwood Logs, 3 bags for 10 euro. 1 kg fire logs, 4 for 5 euro. Shop in store or online at homeland.ie. Okay, you're very welcome back uh, to the programme. Some of your comments here. Calder says, why not just shut everything down on the public holiday? Then every worker gets the day off. I mean, I remember when I was a child, when shops were closed on Sundays, even half days on a Wednesday. Can we not do with one day? Just to relax and spend time doing family things without shops, restaurants, etc. being opened. Um, but that's... Uh, instead of them getting quite a boost, I suppose, of a, a bank holiday, they take an actual hit. Morning, Greg. My family had COVID. Two adults quite poorly for about a week. The children aged seven and two years old, no symptoms, and the four-year-old didn't get it. I would not be happy to vaccinate children. Another looks like real trouble ahead. A new variant of COVID, uh, B11529, has broken out in South Africa. The variant is... 
much more transmissible than even the Delta variant and COVID vaccines are ineffective against it. That's uh, really, that would be the worst case scenario. They simply do not know that uh, at this stage, um, whether that is actually going to be the case. And I wouldn't be worrying too much about it until we know more about it. Uh, but to say that it's more transmissible and evade uh, vaccines, even the top medics in, in South Africa uh, don't know that uh, just yet. Uh, but obviously the UK government uh, taking it very seriously. They've introduced a quarantine for people arriving from uh, some South African countries. A caller says, would it not be sensible for the Irish government to do likewise and not wait till the horse is bolted? Well, the EU are meeting on that uh, today. So we'll see. Greg, I'm a frontline health worker. It's lovely to get an extra bank holiday, but a lot of frontline workers will still have to work. Another, what happens to small business owners who may now have to foot the bill for a public holiday? Do they get looked after? Um, wouldn't it be great uh, if the likes of Councillor Blaney would forego the massive pay rise and donate the bonus to health workers? Uh, it's, it, we've been talking about this one pay rise for quite some time, uh, Liam. Um, I mean, it's it's an extra eight grand, I think, on top of eighteen. I'm not comfortable talking about other people's other people's income, but you know, it's it, it's out there. Um, this has been agreed. Is it something you're in favour of? I'm not asking you to. to to defend it on behalf of 37 other councillors in the county, but... I well, I certainly will. You'll defend it. Excellent. Well, we'll start with... I, you. I will absolutely defend it. I mean, it, 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 county councillors are on the on the ground 24-7. It is um, it is a full-time role. It, it, it gone, gone are the days, but it is, it is a part-time role. It is definitely a full-time role. I was a county councillor before, before I became a senator. Um, and I know the work that I put in, and I know the work that a lot of councillors put in throughout this country. So it isn't even a living wage. It was less. It was less than set, just seventeen thousand uh, before they got the pay rise. So now it's gone up to just just twenty six thousand. It's gone to, and um, it is very much uh, appreciated by the councillors throughout the country. And um, we did fight for it. I know a number of uh, us independent senators did fight to make sure that the councillors throughout this country got their pay rise. Um, so it's not a living wage. It wasn't a living wage. So, I mean, would you work for 17,000 a year full time? Nobody would. So uh, I, I, think I, absolutely... people, I think a lot of people that know what counts, the work councillors do wouldn't do it for either the 18 or the, the 26, if the truth be told, because it it's, a, it's a tough job. It's thankless, like, for the most it, part. It is, a thankless, it, it is a thankless job, but you're, on, you're literally on the go from early morning to late at night and you're the first go-to person when something goes wrong in your community people reach out to the local county councillor because they have the solution so we have some fantastic county councillors throughout this country and uh, Liam, Liam, uh, Liam is among them and uh, many many of the other uh, county councillors around the country work very very hard so I will defend county councillors all day long yeah. I was one myself and I worked very very hard and I know exactly how hard county councillors work throughout this country and they deserve every single penny that they get in a pay rise. Deputy Pringle is a TD, you must be laughing like what, one pay rise? <laughs> <laughs> um, look, I, I, th I think I think actually the council advice is um, necessary, and uh, Sharon does, does say well, the, she's talking to her electorate as well. But uh, the thing about it is that the the big kind the pay raise is necessary. I, I believe I was a councillor for a good few years before I became a TD, and um, the one thing about it is it is a full time job, and I would have loved to been able to work at it full time, but I just simply couldn't afford to with having a. a wife and three children as well and that's that's the reality of the situation and being a counsellor is a full-time role and it should be it should be paid as such as well and um, I think it would mean then that you would get people that actually could devote the role the time to the role and make the role responsible but I think what we, we also need along with that is to actually make councillors responsible for the run of the council as well like um, you know rather than having a complete run by the executive um, I think that would be necessary too um, but I do think it, it's it would it need, definitely would have no problem with the councillors getting the pay Right. Uh, Liam Blaney. Well, <laughs> thank you well enough answered there now, Lord, too, and I'm not going to start blowing the top <laughs> of, of councillors, but Thomas and Sharon both were councillors, and Sharon actually was, was elected, and, and two elected areas at the last council election, not just one, but two. So she's well aware of, uh, of the role yeah. of councillors. But um, this is on since last July. I don't know why all the noise is now. Um, there was a report done, and it, sat, it took years for um, the Moorhead report to be acted on. Uh, and it's now we're now uh, I think getting paid somewhere to three fifths of a grade four 
that's what we're connected to. So as they get as they get increases in civil service as a grade four, we'll get three fifths of that as well. Mm. Um, but as has been said, it is a full time job. It's turned out to be a full time job, and more so, I see it more so in the Letter County Municipal District now since the town council was done away with the pain. Town council was done away with Letter County, mm. and that 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 void has been filled. Oh, we still have a long well. way to go. We still have a long way to go now, Liam, and you probably acknowledge that it is not the most family-friendly environment uh, to be working in. It's, it, you're, you're not getting a lot of young people to go into politics. You're not getting a, a, a lot of women going into politics. So that's things and their challenges that we have to we have to work on. Trying to get maternity leave for for uh, councillors, uh, trying to make it more fa family-friendly, uh, having meetings it, it, in the middle of the day or late in the evening. So we have to try and make make that environment a much more family friendly environment yeah. and an environment where we can encourage the best people to go forward for local government yeah. and that's really what you want and indeed that's a conversation we have regularly on on, on this program the barriers to um you know elected a lot of it is down to the kind of the stuff you've talked about um 400,000 fans, I'm not sure if any of you three were amongst them, snapped up Gareth Brooks tickets yesterday. Two concerts, then three, then five. Uh, some people going to all five concerts. Gareth, uh, Gareth uh, he's got 32 million in his back pocket already, which is is nice for him. Uh, I never thought we, we were in a situation where one artist could uh, effectively get, what is 500, uh, 400 as a percentage of 5 million is pretty significant, you know, you take babies and stuff out of it, it's like 1 in 5 or something, uh, 1 in 6 um, uh, Thomas, I mean it's, I don't mind, it's good if people are happy doing it Yeah, look, I mean, I mean if people want to go Did you get a ticket? Good luck, Thomas. I got 6 <laughs> I wish it had a face got... value to support your wages <laughs> or, or sli slightly above no, actually, I don't see what the attraction is. And personally, I suppose maybe they shouldn't be saying that. But you know, if people want to go and see Gareth Brooks, good luck to them. Um, I wouldn't go and see him if he was in the back, in the back garden. Ah, um, you would. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Well, I know, I know, I can sense that Liam Blaney is a Gareth Brooks fan and has his tickets. Am I right, Liam? No, you're wrong. I'll be a Gareth Brooks fan, okay. But I have no tickets. I don't have the time to, to go to it. But look, uh, if it gives the country a lift, certainly, after the, the last 18 months we've had, and uh, I don't see why, uh, well, although you have to take the consideration of the people living beside the place, but I do think that um, for a once off, five, the five concerts definitely that are out in the sea where Ed Sheeran is chatting about going to come and have a few concerts here in, uh, next year as well. So I think it's all welcome to give everything you can both um, the, the people are left that, that's going to it and, and the people who are watching as well. Well, Sharon, it's all on you now. Uh, uh, well, I, 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 certainly none of uh, the 33 million that went into his uh, back pocket came from Sharon Kyogen, I can assure you. <laughs> I, I mean, I think they're calling, they're calling him now Gart Box yeah. instead of Gart Brooks. Um, but you know, it, it, it's it's marvelous to see. It's great to see that people are having confidence and spending their money, getting their tickets, even if it is for Christmas gifts and stuff like that. But you know, there are a lot. Of, I, I'm already hearing that a lot of the hotels around the Dublin area are putting their prices. Oh, up they were up. They were up. Uh, as soon as the first and that, announced, uh, it, they were up at four hundred. Yeah, 400. and that and that's that's really sad. I mean, look, I know they have to make money, and uh, but you know. Look, I'm a little bit disappointed in that, but look, that's that's the way business is, and they're trying to make money as well. So yeah, so there's lots of there's lots of bucks being made out of Gareth Brooks. Yeah. I can assure you, Gareth Brooks. Were you looking to come in there, Thomas? Yeah, Greg, I was just wondering who's going to step, step in for you when you're going to concerts. Well, you know what? I've never been. I have never ever been to a concert in my life ever. Ever to any never, concert? Never been to a concert in my life, but I'm going to Gareth Brooks. <laughs> I have got three hats, Sharon. Three hats. Three hats. I'm going to wear them Very all at good. the same time. I've got Fantastic. me Stetsons, the whole lot. I'm just trying to do things that I never did before. I've placed barriers in front of myself for no reason. So I'm going to say, you know what? I'm not even a Gareth Brooks fan, but I'm going to go. There you go. There Great. you have it. Um, Thomas Pringle, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Greg. I appreciate your time today. Uh, a pleasure as always. Um, Sharon Kyogen, I beg your pardon, I was pronouncing your name incorrectly, Sharon. I wish you'd have corrected me a little bit earlier on, but that's what yeah, I was it's given. It's okay. It's, Everybody it's just, makes that mistake. It's just the first time I've spoken to you, and it will not, a uh, mistake I won't make again. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very it's, much, it's Greg. It's been lovely having with you. Uh, and last but certainly not least, Councillor Liam Blaney, thanks for your contributions today. I appreciate it. 
Thanks, Greg. All right, take care of yourself. Uh, that were, those were our... Fr- they were off. That was our Friday panel. They were Liam Blaney, Thomas Pringle, Sharon uh, Keoghan. And we'll be back uh, with the weather forecast after these. Today's Nine Till Noon show is brought to you in association with Ulster Tires. Winter is coming. Get your tires winter ready. Call into Ulster Tires in Letterkenny and Bally Buffet today. It's Black Friday sale time in Inish Fitness at the Waterfront Hotel Dunlow. Save a massive 20% on memberships from 26th to the 30th of November. Give your loved ones the gift of fitness or treat yourself to a healthier you. Secure your membership or gift voucher with 20% off by calling Inish Fitness Dunlow 074 9522590. Looking to upgrade your business with a new van but not looking to compromise? Then look no further than the Ford Transit range. From the award-winning custom plug-in hybrid to the new active trail and Transit 5 ton. Need a new pickup? Then check out the multi-awarded Ford Ranger. And with 2 to 1 upgrade offer, save up to €6,500 and get a low rate APR on selected models. Ford Commercial Vehicles. Search Ford.ie. Lending criteria conditions apply. Participating dealers for selected models ordered by the 31st of December and registered by the 31st of March. Business hire purchased by Bank of Ireland Leasing Limited trading as Ford Credit. Dealer charges may apply. Ownership remains with Ford Credit until the final payment is made. Warning, you may have to pay charges if you repay early, in full or in part a fixed rate credit facility. Hi, Theresa Mannion here with a road safety alert for fog. When driving in fog, use your fog lights, slow down and drive with caution. Open your window when stopped at a junction and listen out for traffic. Don't forget to turn off your front and rear fog lights when fog clears. Visit rsa.ie from the Road Safety Authority. This week at Christie Supermarket, we have special offers. Buy nine chicken fillets for only €10, Euros. steak roast £2, €9, Euro, £3, €12.25, £4, €16, Euros, and £3 a stew and steak, only €10. Euros. Christie Supermarket, offering quality and value every day. Open seven days for your convenience. Callahan's Electrical, Letter Kenny and Burt. Black Friday deals are live in store and online. Shark vacuum cleaners from 239 euro. Coffee makers from 35 euro. LG TVs from 479. Black Friday at Callahan's Electrical, Letter Kenny and Burt. Deals not to be missed. Callahan's Electrical, where the best keeps on getting better. Connect Hearing are offering a free hearing test at the Courtyard Shopping Centre Letterkenny and Dunlow Clinic. We also offer a home visit service for test, wax removal and repairs, perfect for those who are unable to visit our centres. Are you struggling to hear the TV or radio? We have the solution. Our wireless devices can be connected to both your TV and phone. With the latest in technology, coupled with a first-class repair and service facility, call us today on 074 91 13296. Connect Hearing, connecting you to life. Highland Radio Weather Updates with National Fuels, delivering home heating oil to letter care and the surrounding areas at competitive prices. National Fuels, 9137 400. OK, so a cold and windy day today with temperatures of 6 to 9 degrees. There'll be widespread showers. They will be heavy at times and falling as sleet and snow over hills and mountains. The northwest to north winds will be fresh to strong and gusty and will reach gale force on our coast so it is going to be uh, a windy one right we've one more ad uh, break to take before we break for the news and obituary notices stay tuned we'll be back uh, with much more on the program after these today's nine till noon show is brought to you in association with ulster tires are your tires ready for winter call into ulster tires in letterkenny and bali buffet today Buy a ticket. Buy a ticket in Highland Radio's mega draw to win a car. To win a car. Get your ticket by November 30th and automatically enter an extra draw Woo-hoo! before the big draw. Big, big draw. One lucky winner will walk away with 2,000 euros. Imagine, that's Christmas all wrapped up. Christmas sorted. The draw will take place on Wednesday, December 1st on the 9 till noon show. 9 till noon. And you're still in with a chance to win the Kia X seat worth over 28,000 euros. 28 grand. It's that simple to win that car. To get your ticket, log on to highlandradio.com. Highland Radio, exceeding your expectations. Ooh. 
entitlement changes for 30,000 farmers. In this week's Farmers Journal, we reveal government plan for leasing and clawback of entitlements. As the fertilizer crisis escalates, we have five pages of essential advice for beef, sheep, dairy and tillage farmers. In a changing jobs market, don't miss our agri-jobs focus and what to look for when buying a second-hand tractor. Plus, free newspaper for young farmers only inside this week's Irish Farmers Journal. On sale now. Raymond Sweeney here from Ben Sweeney Euronics to let you know about the great gifts we have this Christmas. We have fitness trackers from names like Garmin, Samsung, Fitbit and Huawei. Wireless earbuds and headphones from as little as €29. Euros. The Ninja Air Fryer is a low-fat, healthier way to cook your favourite fried foods from fluffy golden chips and crispy chicken wings to roasted vegetables. And a great selection of TVs, laptops and printers. Ben Sweeney Euronics, Port Road Letter Kenny and the Shopping Centre down low. With great present ideas this Christmas and great Black Friday deals in store right now. Join us in Donegal Town this Christmas for a special Christmas extravaganza. 100 plus boutique stores, discounts galore, late opening. Capture the festive atmosphere at the Donegal Town shopping spree, Friday the 3rd and Saturday the 4th of December. At Super Value, we want to share even more magic this Christmas by giving you savings off your shopping with our real rewards vouchers, which are available on our handy app. So no need to worry about leaving them at home. If you haven't already, download the Real Rewards app to get new vouchers every week until Christmas. Share the magic this Christmas with Super Value. Every home needs that something special. At Max Light Lighting, that's exactly what we can do for your home. High quality, stylish interior lighting and illuminated mirrors at exceptional value. See maxlight.ie or call into Callan Electrical in Letterkenny Retail Park and see a selection of our lights that will give your home that wow factor. Live on air, online and on the Highland Radio app, this is Highland Radio News. It's 10 o'clock. Good morning. I'm Catherine Gaffney. Significant changes are expected to the MICA redress scheme. Campaigners are hopeful the proposals for the long-awaited scheme will finally be ready by next Tuesday following several delays and weeks of negotiations. The enhanced scheme will be complex with improvements said to be timely and reasonable according to comments made in the Daw last night. Donegal Deputy Joe McHugh added that the scheme must be realistic too and says that homeowners must be afforded peace and hope in the run-up to Christmas. Maybe we could add to timely, reasonable and consistent. Maybe we could throw in realistic as well. It has to be realistic. The previous scheme was not the scheme uh, that certainly I signed up to. Lastly and by no means least, the homeowners who are hearing those cracks grow louder on a stormy night in the middle of the winter, they have to be allowed something that I certainly used to take for granted, and that is peace, peace of mind, and peace to face into their first Christmas in a decade. Responding on behalf of the Housing Minister, Minister Malcolm Noonan gave reassurances that the work undertaken to get the scheme right has been phenomenal. And again, uh, taking on board the points you make about uh, dedicated staffing within the department, the local me mechanisms for delivery and the trust ar around earning trust and the homeowners at the centre of this scheme. That's what we're trying to achieve. I know there's other issues being raised in the doll about modular bills and affordability, and I think those are for another day. But I do think, um, just to reassure you, Deputy, that the, the, the work that has been put into this has been uh, phenomenal by our department and by the Minister himself. The Justice Minister says hotel quarantine could be reintroduced following the emergence of a new COVID-19 variant. The European Commission's proposing member states ban air travel from the southern African region after cases were identified there. It's also possible the Munster rugby team, who are currently in South Africa, may have to quarantine upon their return to Ireland. Minister Helen McEntee says the variant could be more transmissible than previous strains. While we're obviously still learning about it, the early indications would show that this is potentially uh, more transmissible and, and potentially more able to, to evade the vaccination. What the Commission has proposed is that obviously in coordination with member states that they would activate an emergency break. This would stop all travel from the southern region. The head of the HSE says he fully appreciates restrictions on children are difficult. Neffet's advising against indoor community gatherings for under 12s, including parties, communions and sleepovers. It's also recommending that children over nine wear masks in schools, on public transport and in shops. 
HSE CEO Paul Reid says children attending hospitals with respiratory related illnesses is having an impact on the health system. We were assessing the emergency attendances to our children's hospitals in the period of October to early November. And if you compare with 2019, which would be the year before the pandemic, there were about 11,700 presentations in that five-week period. In the equivalent five-week period this year in 2021, there were almost 20,000 presentations, so it's a 70% increase. It'll be towards the end of December before COVID-19 vaccines will be rolled out to children aged between 5 and 11. It's expected the jabs will be administered through HSE vaccine centres. A final recommendation from NIACS likely in the coming days following yesterday's approval by the EMA. John Boyle from the Teachers Union, the INTO, says he's optimistic parents will opt to get their children vaccinated. Within three weeks, if I recall, um, over 62% of the children in post-primary schools had been vaccinated. So, you know, there, there's obviously um, a, a window here for parents to familiarise themselves. And I know that uh, on balance, that the decision was strongly in favour of um, providing access to the vaccine for children of that age group. A Fianna Fáil councillor has acknowledged significant capital investment needs to be pumped into Letterkenny University Hospital. The hospital has been in the spotlight every day this week from being the most overcrowded in Ireland to over 22,000 people on waiting list and almost 130 staff vacancies. There was also news this week that construction on a new community hospital in Letterkenny could start next year. Speaking on today's Nine Till Noon show, Councillor Liam Blaney says while the new hospital might alleviate some issues down the line, he believes a lot more money needs to be spent in the main facility. Both money and capital need to be spent. Although we have the private hospital coming to Letterkenny, I think it's going to be hopefully get get up and going uh, next year uh, or start the building on it. But uh, there's serious capital needed uh, to provide a lot more at Lennox County Hospital than what is already there. And, and the staff is there is under huge pressure. cold windy day with temperatures of 6 to 9 degrees. There will be widespread showers, heavy at times and falling as sleet or snow over hills and mountains. That's it for now. We're back with the headlines for you at 11 o'clock. Until then, good morning. The obituary notices for Friday morning, the 26th of November. The death has occurred of Annie McCauley, Nemal Hearn, Curran Sport, Gartha Hork, Donegal. Her remains are reposing at her late residence. Rosary tonight at 9 o'clock with house private after the rosary until 11am. Funeral mass in Christ the King Church, Gartha Hork, tomorrow at half past 12 with burial afterwards in the adjacent graveyard. The funeral mass can be viewed on MCN Media, Gartha Hork and on Kieran Rorty, Funeral Director Facebook page. The death has taken place of Marion Doherty, Ní Harkin, Ardahi, Inver. Her remains are reposing at her late residence. Removal from there tomorrow, going to Gallagher's Funeral Home, Mount Charles for prayers and service at half past 11, private to family and friends, followed by cremation in Lakelands Crematorium Cavan at 3 o'clock. Family, flowers only please, donations in lieu if so desired to the rehab unit Letterkenny, care of Gallagher Funeral Directors Mount Charles. House private to family and friends. The death has occurred of Dennis Boyle, John Tague, Acres, Burton Port. His remains are reposing at his late residence. House private to family, neighbours and close friends only, please. Funeral mass tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock in St Columbus Church, Acres, followed by burial in Belcritch Cemetery. The death has taken place of Kay McGee, Balliar, Remelton. Her remains are reposing at her home, which is private to family only, please. Funeral mass this morning at 11 o'clock in St Angus's Church, Burt, with burial afterwards in Burt Cemetery. The funeral mass can be viewed live on churchservices.tv. Family, flowers only, donations if desired, to the Donegal Hospice, care of Patrick Sweeney, funeral director. The death has taken place of Mary T. Coyle, 
30 Dr McGinley Road, Letterkenny. Her remains are reposing at her late residence. Funeral from there this morning going to St Eunan's Cathedral for Requiem Mass at 11 o'clock, followed by interment in Umla Old Cemetery, Carrigart. The funeral is private to family and friends, please. And the death has taken place of Bridget McColgan, Bakken Kaldaf. Bridget's remains are reposing at her home. Bridget's funeral mass will take place tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock in St Mary's Church, Bakken Kaldaf, with burial afterwards in the adjoining graveyard. The funeral mass can be viewed live on kildafparish.com, house private to family and close friends only place. For more details, including any family health guidelines for wakes and funerals, please go to highlandradio.com. This Christmas. Can I tell you a secret? I'm working with an Avenger. The best gift comes with a bow. You're a Hawkeye. Who the hell are you? Some people have actually called me the world's greatest archer. It's kind of a stretch. In a brand new six part original series. Should we be worried? No, I'll be home for Christmas. I promise. Christmas never felt so good. It's going to be the best Christmas ever. Marvel Studios Hawkeye. First two episodes streaming soon only on Disney Plus. 18 plus subscription required. T's and C's apply. With all the stories that matter across the Northwest, it's Greg Hughes on the 9 to Noon Show on Highland Radio. And you're very welcome back uh, to the programme. Thank you for all your texts and comments so far this morning. Let's run through some of them now. A caller says, we are at breaking point in the health service, COVID or not, they are not fit for purpose. You take the COVID situation out, uh, you replace it with what's being cancelled, and, and, and who can disagree? Uh, does Thomas Pringle ever plan on entering government by putting on the green shirt and helping to make these tough decisions, or is he going to remain in opposition forever and just complain? It's an easy seat to sit in, they say. Another caller says, The GP service in this country has turned into a shambles. It's impossible to get to see a doctor unless I could get a negative PCR test first. It's no wonder the hospital uh, hospitals are full. It's time for the GPs to step up. They are far too interested in getting money for vaccinations, though uh, they're not really doing that at the moment, are they? Uh, other than what they would normally do at the, this time of year. But they say it's time to remove the vaccinations from them and put them in the hands of the pharmacies and vaccination clinics. I have a lot of sympathy for... Uh, like, every GP is different, and, and that's clear from the comments we get, right? But I was listening to Paul Reid of the HSC on earlier today, uh, and in most counties, except up here um, and a few others, in most counties, you cannot get a PCR test if you want one. So if you're feeling a bit ill and uh, you want to know whether you've got COVID or not, you can't book an appointment for today in uh, the majority of the country. Uh, and then Paul Reid on this morning, and this is not having a goal of blaming Paul Reid, he says, we have to prioritise the situation, and I'm not quoting him directly. We have to prioritise cases, um, and we are currently prioritising GP referrals, right? So, in other words, if you want to be priority for a PCR test today, uh, you go to you, you ring your GP, don't you? So, what happens then? As soon as he says that, people go right. I'm not checking the. Uh, I'm not checking checking the the PCR uh, booking portal. I'm going to ring my GP now. So, as soon as he says that, you've got hundreds, uh, sorry, thousands, if not tens of thousands of people, then calling the GP, saying, I've got symptoms and I need a referral. OK, that's inevitable. So that's us that are doing that because it's the only way we can get a PCR test. So then you have people who are sick with other things, right, trying to ring the GP and the GP's phone's ringing uh, off the hook uh, because people are trying to book PCR tests. And what do they do? They say, well, I'm not risking this. I'm going to go to the ED and I'll sit in there. And next thing, the ED's overrun. So I'm not saying... I'm not saying it's. It, I'm not criticising Paul Reid, by the way, on this occasion, and I'm not saying it's doing it purposely. But one interview where he says we're prioritising GP referrals, everyone rings the GP looking for a referral, and then maybe the GPs can't answer the calls uh, as best as they would like to to deal with other issues out there. So I would say that contributes to everything because then what do you do? If you're worried about someone, you say, well, I'm not sitting here. I've tried to ring my GP. I can't get through. I'm going to get down to the ED because at least down there, if something goes wrong, I'm surrounded by medical professionals. And that's just one thing. I could be wrong. And if anyone can con uh, w wants to uh, oppose that view, uh, do so. But it's that kind of situation that we're in. You can't get a PCR test. Head of the HSC says you can if you go to your GP. People try and go to the GP for the PCR test. 
other people can't get through with other medical conditions, they go to the ED, and it just seems like one thing feeds into the other. Uh, wouldn't it be great if the likes of Councillor Blaney... Oh, I've read that one already. What about hospital staff? They still have to work bank holidays, indeed, but I think they get that time somewhere else, so they still get the day, if not on that Friday. What different uh, strains in the community is he talking about? Does he know something we don't about other strains? Numbers don't equal deaths. 96% of adults vaccinated. So why vaccinate children to protect adults has been said when this doesn't affect our children. Greg, why is it always down to children? Yes, they are back at school, but it's like everything else. Bugs, flu, all start in the classroom and uh, they bring it home. I'm so disheartened with the decision that caller says. Um, my nine-year-old granddaughter is in a class of 22 in primary school in Galway. 13 of that class have COVID. The other classes are just as bad, so surely this school should be closed. Uh, in Britain, there are schools just closing. There's principals are saying that. This ain't working. I'm closing up. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised we don't see more of that here. But we did see it once, didn't we? And uh, it became a national story. And um, the... Uh, the uh, principal ended up getting quite publicly scolded. Another caller says it's criminal to give an experimental vaccine that's not fully trialled. I mean, we could argue that back and forwards all day, couldn't we? Uh, but we to give the vaccine to children whose immune system haven't fully developed yet in order to protect adults. Hi, Greg. It seems like school children weren't a problem until it was time to vaccinate them, just like under fives aren't a problem at the minute. But you can be sure they will be when it's their turn for the vaccine. Uh, this is about getting every single person on the planet a vaccine, passport, digital ID, and they won't stop at anything unless until this is achieved. I mean, you know, what we're going to see now is, you know, and, and it's a very tough decision. It's a very tough decision for uh, 12 to 15-year-olds, um, and it's a very tough decision, too, for the younger children. It is a tough enough decision, I think, that parents should be given the space to do it, to make that decision. I think already it started whereby they're being told that they're killing the children and this is going to happen and that's going to happen. Um, that's not free choice to me. I think free choice is parents being actually, or guardians being able to make these decisions without others trying to scare them into that decision one way or other, uh, you know. Um, if we are all about freedom of choice and there's going to be a lot of people marching on Saturday in Dublin probably looking for freedoms, well, let's give parents and guardians the freedom to make uh, their decisions as well rather than trying to scare them into a decision uh, one way or the other. I mean, it's generally accepted, thankfully, very generally accepted that children um, very, very, very rarely get very sick uh, with COVID. That's the one saving grace of this whole thing. Um, so parents have to make a decision. Do they trust the, 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 the health advice and do they think it's for the greater good? Um, I think that's a tough enough decision without people trying to scare them into a decision one way uh, or another. That would just be my views if we are talking about people's freedom of choice and, 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 and what have you. Right, good luck if you are playing the bingo today. Here are those numbers for you. It's time for NCBI Bingo on Highland Radio. It's Friday the 26th of November. You're playing on the yellow sheet. The reference number is S15. It's game number 47. The numbers are... 29 30 54 48 84 34 2 23 46 and finally, 50. Phone your claim to 9104833 before 8 tonight. Leave in your name, contact number and the name of the shop where you purchased your book and we'll call you back the next working day. Get all your NCBI bingo information at highlandradio.com. Today's 9 to noon show is brought to you in association with Ulster Tires. Are your tires ready for winter? Call into Ulster Tires in Letterkenny and Bally Buffet today. Buy a ticket. Buy a ticket in Highland Radio's Mega Draw to win a car. To win a car. Get your ticket by November 30th and automatically enter an extra draw before the big draw. Big, big draw. One lucky winner will walk away with 2,000 euros. Imagine, that's Christmas all wrapped up. Christmas sorted. The draw will take place on Wednesday, December 1st on the 9 till noon show. 9 till noon. And you're still in with a chance to win the Kia X-Seat worth over 28,000 euros. 28 grand. It's that simple, 
to win that car. To get your ticket, log on to HighlandRadio.com. Highland Radio, exceeding your expectations. Ooh. For Black Friday weekend, there's great savings at McGee's Chemist Letter Kenny with 20% of Longcomb Skin Care, 20% of Inglot, and 25% of CeraVe, La Roche Posay, and Vichy Skin Care. Special offers on Clarence, Be Perfect, Sosu, and more. Great discounts on fragrances by Calvin Klein, Hugo Boss, and many more top names. That's from Thursday the 25th until Sunday the 28th at McGee's Chemist, in store and online at McGee's.ie. Stock already discounted and gift sets are excluded from Black Friday offers. This is the new Toyota Yaris Cross. A new kind of SUV. New point of view. New compact style. New spacious feel. And exclusively self charging hybrid. The right choice for today. Get a new perspective with the Yaris Cross self charging hybrid. You'll never take a wrong turn with Toyota. Built for a better world. Don't miss the crazy Black Friday deals right now at Watson Hire in Letterkenny. Up to 70% off the recommended retail price on hand and power tools, paint, homeware, clothing and much more. Many are at clearance prices that won't be repeated. Loads of great present ideas now reduced. That's amazing Black Friday deals right now at Watson Hire, Kiltoy Letterkenny. Visit watsonhire.ie or see Facebook for daily offers. Hi, Theresa Mannion here with some advice about the dangers of sun glare. You may not think it, but sunshine can create extremely dangerous driving conditions. Sun glare can be intensified if your windscreen is dirty or greasy or if it's been raining. Keep the inside of your screen clean, use windshield washer fluid and check your wipers. Keep sunglasses in your car and be extra vigilant coming out of junctions and around bends. If you're dazzled by sun glare, slow down and be prepared to stop from the Road Safety Authority. Christmas is well underway at Letterkenny Shopping Centre. Park for free and get everything you need. Thank you for shopping with us this Christmas. Letterkenny Shopping Centre, bringing you the time at... 20 past 10, we'll play Garth at 10.30-ish. Pick his song. Go on, which is your favourite one of his? 086 uh, WhatsApp us and uh, or text us and pick which Garth Brooks song we play at 10.30 for the day that's in it. Uh, hi, there's a big tree down between Churchill and Loch Kibben covering nearly the whole road. We're going to see maybe more of that over the next... Uh, between now and this time tomorrow, perhaps, uh, a lot of wind coming in from different directions too. Uh, you know, the old trees and, and what have you can be resilient to regular wind directions, but perhaps maybe they could, could be undone with a, a wind coming from a, an unusual direction at a strong pace. Uh, the UK government's giving antigen tests for free to the public. Nobody there is saying the public is too stupid to follow the instructions on the box. Our government is a cheapskate and we will pay for their ineptitude. That being said... Dare I even say it? Their figures are through the roof over there, um, and um, that's with antigen testing. And I think that's what I think Neffet have referred referenced that. Uh, do these restrictions for children include indoor training for sport? There's no restrictions as of yet. There's a, a, a conversation been had by Neffet. Uh, their recommendations, as you might expect, have been leaked. The government is meeting on Tuesday, so nothing is decided um, at this point. Uh, Caller says, this is just a push to vaccinate our children. The masks are just part of the conditioning for it. When the government wanted the children back in schools, all the minister and Neffet all said schools were safe. It's all about lining the pockets of Pfizer. Next is 25-year-olds. Uh, next is 25-year-olds, guaranteed. Oh, two to five-year-olds. OK. Um, listen, people aren't obliged to do anything. I think there'll probably be, I'd say, probably a 50 or 60% uptake in that at all. Um, there's more in, uh, of skin in the game than Pfizer. I, I also wondered why Pfizer gets so much attention, uh, you know, because there's obviously Moderna, uh, there's Johnson, the Russians have their own vaccine, uh, the Koreans have their own vaccine as well, and there's more coming on. And yet this over-focus on Pfizer, I might be have my opinion more swayed if, if, if it just wasn't focusing on um, one company when there's so many companies lining their pockets off the back of this. Uh Neil Cullen is chair of Milford Ain2, and we're talking about road safety. Hi, Neil. Morning, Greg. How are you doing? I'm all right. Now, you're raising concerns about a stretch of road. Uh, it's overlooking Mulroy Bay. Tell us, uh, describe to us uh, what is the situation there, what you think needs doing. Well, this is a stretch of road just below Cranford. It's called the Palms, or it used to be called the, the Corsh Cruise on the, on the old road. 
But uh, this is the third. Just three weeks. This three weeks today, they, they went to Canada off the road, and uh, it went down on them bank. But I over the wall and down about fifteen to twenty foot. Now, it was, she was absolutely blessed. If she had been another four or five foot further, she was over another embankment and down another forty foot. And God only knows what would have happened there. But uh, I have a feeling the next gag was in there. It's going to be a fatality. I yeah. mean, this this is this is the third gag to go on now in the last number of years. We've had a lot of other accidents at it, but this is the third gag that's gone actually off the road and. The trees, there was a woman from her melting one in three years ago. And she was in there from half eight in the morning to, I think it was six or half six in the evening when they finally got her. The only way they got her was with her phone, her signal and her phone, I think. She was missing because you can't see, once you go over and down there, there were trees in at that time and they stopped, they saved her a bit. But now then trees were taken, there was another care in a couple of weeks after that. And the them trees are cut away, so there's no yard now at all. Once you go over the wall, if you go over that post embankment, you're, you're just gone. So what you're saying is we shouldn't be relying on luck. We have to put in uh, some measures oh, here. There has to be a crash barrier put up, put up here, absolutely. The, after them, uh, other incidents happened. The council did put up a, a what I would call a clay bank, mm. you know, and uh, but, but over the years now, the last couple of years, that's subsided, and it, it's it's kind of formed what you would see from the last car that went in there. It's it's just like a launching pad. Yeah, I get Once you. The van goes off the road, goes around the corner, you know, and uh, it's just. It's how, how big a stretch are we have. talking, uh, Neil? How big a stretch are we talking for a crash oh, barrier? A crash barrier, but. Say about forty meters at most. Right. So it's not hugely significant. Oh, it's not not at all. No, no. And I mean, it's three weeks today this happened. I'm shocked that nothing has been done. But you would need signs approaching from Mulford at this corner. Uh, there's arrows, yellow arrows on the side of the road, but there's nothing telling how just how dangerous this corner really is. Yeah, and I suppose uh, you know we have to make sure that drivers are aware of dangers on the roads, as we oh, say. Yeah, the, the, that is part of our. That's part of the causation of uh, of collisions. Is 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 you know are drivers being made aware? Are there safety measures in place to as limit as best as possible injury? Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, listen. Thank you for that. Um, good points. Well made as always. Thanks, Neil. I appreciate it. Okay. You're familiar with that stretch. Uh, it's a black spot overlooking Mulroy Bray. Uh, a, Mulroy Bay, I beg your pardon. A couple of cars have gone over one three weeks ago. The person had a very lucky escape by Neil's testimony there. Um, obviously still shook by it. Um, 08660 25,000. Right, I just want to give a quick mention to our mega car draw. Mega car draw. <laughs> uh, the mega car draw, which is taking place here on Highland Radio. Um, that's towards the end of December. Uh, this week, by the way, though, if you buy your tickets, you're in for a chance to win two grand in cash next Wednesday, I believe it is. We'll be making the draw in this programme for €2,000 in cash. It's an incentive uh, for you to get your tickets early. Uh, and the main prize, of course, even if you win the cash, your name goes back into the draw drum. You're in for that. Um, now, what is the top prize? The top prize is a beautiful Kia Exceed in association with our friends at iMotors in Malin and Drumkeen. It's a petrol model in white and it comes with all the extras you get with a Kia and it's worth almost €30,000 to be in with a chance to win um, and uh, go onto our website highlandradio.com click on the win this car icon and you can purchase your tickets. They're a tenner for one. You can buy six for 50 if you're looking for presents and what have you or you just want to treat yourself ten for 80 uh, but obviously um you know, well within your means and for fun and for nice gifts for people. Uh, good luck. If you buy your ticket this week, you could also win that two grand. So if you're thinking of getting a ticket, right, if you get it this week, you can also win that two grand. But on top of that too, I'd imagine, and you'll still be in the running for it, there might be other little uh, incentives, uh, maybe not so little incentives, as we head toward draw day in the... Uh, towards the end of uh, December, just in front of uh, Christmas. OK, good luck if you're playing. Uh, not good luck if you're playing. Good luck if you've entered there. Uh, why uh, a widow who is not a pensioner can only get the fuel allowance, but I cannot get other allowances like phone, TV licence, free electricity units or the living alone allowance. Surely this is discrimination against younger widows. 
My niece is a single parent and she gets a lot more allowances than me. The difference in her and me, I chose to get married before having a family. It's not my fault that my husband died suddenly. Why are no politicians acting on our behalf? Morning, Greg. Will you be talking about hotel prices as they jump to 400 for one night next year? And who uh, did and didn't get Garth Brooks tickets? I'm absolutely hope broken. I didn't. I have no bank account. Oh, well, listen. There are people that, uh, you know, partners that were all buying tickets and maybe someone out there has some tickets available at face value that you can help this person out. They don't have a bank account. Uh, hopefully they have access to money. Maybe we can put you in contact with them. I don't think the prices jumped uh, because the prices, they did jump, but they didn't jump when the tickets became available. They actually jumped uh, when the, the concerts were announced. When those five nights were booked, all of those nights became expensive. Uh, children have been going to school for the last two years without masks. Wasn't a study in Europe. Uh, Germany, I think, that showed that masks did not help. In fact, there were so many germs on it. That's not um, true uh, if they're used correctly. Um, and it's in a very simple process. They stop you spreading stuff out of your nose and mouth to somebody else. Uh, but obviously they have to be used uh, correctly. Uh, private hospital will solve our health crisis. This kind of comment you would expect from someone of direct lineage. Um, right, I think that was there was a crossover there because it wasn't a private hospital. It was the, um, it was the public... Uh, nursing home, community hospital. Morning, Greg. So we went from children are safe from COVID to making them wear a mask to giving them the vaccine and no doubt a booster. Uh, talking then newborns to five-year-olds. It's atrocious and shocking to even go down this road. Frontline staff are people who work in hospitals and healthcare settings. All others are second and third line in my option, or sorry, in my opinion. And all healthcare staff should be given annual leave plus proper resourcing. All right, keep them coming. I'm going to wait, get through those over the course of the next half an hour or so. Uh, we're going to take a break. Uh, keep your suggestions for a Garth Brooks song coming during the break and then we'll play that for you after. Today's Nine Till Noon show is brought to you in association with Ulster Tires. Get your tires ready for winter. Call in to Ulster Tires in Letterkenny and Bally Buffet today. For great fuel deals, contact Gortley Sales and Hire. Large sacks and trailer loads of logs. Also briquettes, coal, kindling and gas with free delivery locally. Contact Gortley Sales and Hire in Letterkenny on 912676. Central Auto Parts really do stock everything for all makes and models of cars. Shocks, springs, wipers, mats, brakes. Need I go on? And now stocking Sully Mix and Sunny Car and Commercial Paint. Central Auto Parts, Portlink Road Business Park, Letterkenny. Find us on Facebook or call us on 074 9127 491. The day has finally arrived. Some say the most important one of the year. Tesco's Christmas home delivery and free click and collect slots are now open to book. This Christmas, nothing's stopping us. So give yourself a little help this year and book yours today at tesco.ie. Book early. Slots will be going faster than, well, Santa's sleigh on Christmas Eve. Tesco. Every little helps. If you want to get in shape or stay fit through the winter and beyond, you won't want to miss the Black Friday sale in Inish Fitness at the Waterfront Hotel Dunlow, where they're giving a whopping 20% of all memberships from the 26th to the 30th of November. Why wait until Christmas to purchase a gift voucher? Give your loved ones the gift of fitness this year or treat yourself to a healthier you. Call 07495 22590 Inish Fitness, the future of fitness in West Donegal. At Centra, we have everything you need for Christmas, like selected soft drinks like Coca-Cola 20 Camp Pack, only €10. Euro. Jacob's USA Elite and Afternoon Tea Biscuit Tins, €8 euro each. And until Sunday, our Christmas cracker offer on Nougat Estate 3rd Generation and Arresti Estate Selection, €6 euro each. Centra, live every day. Enjoy golf sensibly. Patterson's Black Friday sale is now on with fantastic discounts across all departments. Appliances, beds, mattresses, dining table and chairs, suites, furniture and giftware. Come visit their massive sleep centre on the first floor. Christmas decorations and gifts now on display. Patterson's Black Friday sale is now on at the Hall Ifford. For fantastic Black Friday deals, visit Rossview Interiors Letterkenny, where there's amazing savings on a large range of sofas, in stock and ready for delivery before Christmas. There's also huge savings on bedroom and occasional furniture, dining sets and Hollywood mirrors with dressing tables, the perfect Christmas gift. That's right now at Rossview Interiors, the home of better deals, at Rossview Business Park, Letterkenny, just off the Polestar Roundabout. See rossviewinteriors.com. All right.
right, that ended a little bit sooner than anticipated. OK, thank you for every uh, one of you uh, who messaged in and texted in. Funny enough, you know, it was all of Garth's slow songs, not all of them, but the majority of people were looking for songs like The River, uh, Unanswered Prayers, and the most uh, requests came in for this one. This is uh, The Dance, back in 3 minutes and 39 seconds. OK, and uh, that was uh, requested by one particular person for a special reason, so uh, hopefully um, uh, they're happy with that. Right, Frank, uh, Frank Harburn is sailed to general manager for the rollout of the vaccination programme in the West and North West. Uh, Frank, thanks for joining us this morning. Good morning, Greg. How are you? I'm OK. Now, for those uh, who are looking to uh, get a vaccination, they have an opportunity to do so this weekend. They do indeed, yeah. So we're running um, two walking clinics. Uh, for booster vaccines for people aged 60 to 69 and also for healthcare workers. So that's on Saturday the 27th at 8am to 3.30pm. Now, what are the um, criteria there? Because um, do you have to be five months? Is it six months from your second dose? Or what if you got a, a single dose vaccination? What's the story there? Yeah, so it's it's, a, it's an interval of, of, of five months from your second dose, which is about 152 days. Um, except if for those individuals who got the Johnson, uh, the, the Janssen vaccine, which was the one-shot vaccine, and that's a three-month interval since they had that. 
So we imagine everyone who got that would be pretty much eligible at this point for... Uh, for and how do you prove that? I mean, is there a database there? Will that be checked? Yes, it will, yeah. So everyone will be checked when they come in. Um, so, so on Saturday the 27th, like I say, 8 a.m. to 3.30, and that's for people who had their second dose on or before the 28th of June. Again, specifically for 60, 69-year-olds and healthcare workers. And then on Sunday, the 28th of November, 8.15 to 5.20 for those that have the second dose on or before the 29th of June. Mm-hmm. And it's very, very important as well, though, for those individuals who, who, who are eligible and it's their time within those groups of 60 to 69 healthcare workers, if they've had a positive COVID-19 diagnosis in the past six months, they won't be able to take their booster yet until that six-month period is up. So they can either phone HSC Live or there's a form they can complete and send in on the hsc.ie website so it's six months um post uh when you would have been determined clear of covid before you can get the vaccination so the booster. Yeah, before you can get the booster that's correct yeah at least six months after you've had a positive test result then uh, you can get your booster uh, healthcare workers is that clearly defined you know um is it all healthcare workers you know what i mean it, just to say if anyone turning up and they go well you actually don't wouldn't qualify under that category everyone knows who they are do they yeah, well, well, yeah, they, they should do. The vast majority will have already been working in healthcare when they had their previous doses. Yeah. Um, so they'll be on the system as a healthcare worker as well. They could bring along um, some proof that they are a healthcare worker, like a staff badge or something like that. Um, you know, that's that's fine. But they'll be down on the system as a, as a healthcare worker there. What is the situation as it relate, relates to those uh, seeking their third dose if they have uh, underlying health conditions? Is there any progress in that regard? Yeah, there's a couple of things going on there. We're currently vaccinating people who've been referred by a consultant or GP as being immunocompromised. So that's a a clinical decision that has to be made about an individual based on some criteria that is set nationally. And so those people will get appointments for those as they come through. Um, For other individuals, there were some people who were at high risk or very high risk uh, for for some particular conditions. Um, And they'll actually be due a booster um, and they'll start to get appointments, and they'll be appointment only to start with, as most of these groups are. Uh, there, there was some suggestion um, that it could be the end of December into next year, after Christmas anyway, before those aged over uh, 50 would be uh, called for a third dose. That time frame might be slipping forward, moving forward a bit. Yeah, we're hoping. Um, yeah, I mean, nationally, we've been looking at operationalising this. Um, we're hoping we're going to be get started with the 50 to 59s around mid-December and certainly before Christmas. I think I think it's important when we're talking as well about the walk-ins for, say, healthcare workers in 60 to 69, as we are at the minute, is that those individuals will, will get appointments anyway. This just gives another opportunity for those that haven't been able to attend their appointment yet and are due, or those that, are, that feel they're due but were concerned that they haven't been called yet. And is the system robust enough now or, or developed enough now that they are taken off the list if they turn up or if someone goes to a pharmacy that they're not recorded as a no-show? Like, is the system in place now that we can properly keep a track of this? Yeah, so if, if somebody turns up as a walk-in, um, the system is updated live there in real time. Um, and, and equally, pharmacy, it's a very good point you mentioned, and, and there's a wide range of pharmacies offering booster doses to eligible groups, but also doses for dose one and dose twos. Um, and so details of all those pharmacies are online at hse.ie mm. as well. Which, Some of them are on... Ring, ring your local yeah, pharmacy. Yeah, the problem with that, and maybe this is not your problem, Frank, mm. there are pharmacies listed on the HSE website that actually aren't uh, doing vaccinations because they aren't getting the numbers to justify opening vials and all that type of stuff. I yeah. mean, is that list really uh you know you're looking to encourage as many people as possible i presume uh is that really the best way of doing it because it can be a bit hit and miss and whether a pharmacy although they're a bit listed whether or not they are actually providing vaccines yeah well obviously from our point of the program with the the vaccination centers i can't really speak for what okay. individual pharmacies are doing but i would suggest if anyone rings their local pharmacy or go or pops in if they're if they're passing and have a chat with them and ask them because they may well be able to get the appointment they want there right just as it relates to walk-ins now is it specifically for the for the people that you've mentioned uh booster vaccine for those aged 60 to 69 and healthcare workers of all ages presumably um with the caveats that you mentioned saturday the 27th of november between 8 a.m and 3 30 p.m um, for people who had a second dose on or before 28th of June. Sunday the 28th, 8.15am to 5.20 for those who had the second dose on or before 29th of June. Any other uh, groups of people able to uh, walk up or is it specific to those categories, uh, Frank? Well, well, those categories are absolutely spot on, but also in terms of we are, we are going to take some dose one and dose two walk-ins on Saturday as well. 
again at the same time between 8 and 3.30. And All right. for the second dose, dose on or before the 28th of June. And uh, that's this weekend, Letterkenny Vaccination Centre. What, uh, sorry, what vaccine are you administering and does it matter what vaccine someone got previously? Uh, Pfizer. So it'll be fi Pfizer for the boosters and the dose ones and dose twos will be Pfizer as well this weekend. OK, thanks for your time. Terrific, thank All you. All right, take care. Uh, Frank Harborn. Uh, well, we didn't contact him. They contacted us looking to get that information out there. For those who it is relevant to, uh, the others out there who've made their minds up, put your fingers in your ears, it's uh, not for you, but it's for those who have decided that's what they want to do. And uh, they asked us to give the information as to how they can do it. Right, more after these. Today's Nine Till Noon show is brought to you in association with Ulster Tires. Get your tires winter ready. Drop in to Ulster Tires in Letterkenny and Bally Buffet today. As you start rediscovering Northern Ireland again, we want you to explore with confidence. That's why we've introduced the We're Good To Go industry standard for tourism and hospitality businesses. So you know they've agreed to follow COVID-19 safety guidelines, like social distancing, following the recommended cleaning processes and undergoing spot checks, so you can enjoy your break to the full. Look out for the safety symbol for businesses that are good to go. Northern Ireland, we're good to go. Brought to you by Tourism Northern Ireland in partnership with UK national tourism bodies. There's two kinds of O's you hear at Christmas. The O of disappointment and socks. Oh, thanks. And the O of surprise, joy and great taste award winning food. Oh, this looks nice. Prepare to hear plenty of O's at Lidl this Christmas with our biggest ever deluxe range and more great taste awards than any other retailer in the Republic. Lidl, more for everyone this Christmas. Be properly prepared for a Donegal winter and the odd power cut with a visit to Wet n Wild. Wet n Wild are a local family business fully stocked with stoves, gas, head torches, flasks, hydration bottles, sleeping bags, folding beds, pocket knives, merino socks, wellies, gloves and hats. Smile this winter with a visit to Wet n Wild. This Christmas, we've offers so good it's impossible to choose. Like Christmas dinner, now one month's heating. Presents for the kids, two weeks' rent, and winter jackets, only this week's electricity bill. Many families will face impossible choices this Christmas. Please support the St. Vincent de Paul annual appeal. Donate locally at svp.ie or call 0818 176 176. Starting from Monday the 22nd of November, Letterkenny Driving Range has a one-week Black Friday special with 20% off all stock. Yes, golf clubs, bags, balls, clothing and accessories. If it's in store, it's on offer, but only while stocks last. Letterkenny Driving Range, where the real golfers go. If you're age 60 to 69, you will soon be offered a COVID-19 vaccine booster dose. COVID-19 vaccines offer protection from serious illness, but this may weaken over time. The booster is recommended to give you the best possible protection. When it's time for your vaccination centre appointment, you will receive a text message from the HSE. It's very important to take up your booster appointment. For more information, visit hse.ie or call HSE Live on 1800 700 700 from the HSE. Join us in Donegal Town this Christmas for a special Christmas extravaganza. 100 plus boutique stores, discounts galore, late opening. Capture the festive atmosphere at the Donegal Town shopping spree, Friday the 3rd and Saturday the 4th of December. Highland Radio weather updates with National Fuels Letter Kenny for a keen price on your home heating oil. Call National Fuels on 9137 400. So a cold wintry day and windy day with temperatures 6 to 9 degrees. There'll be widespread showers heavy at times, falling as sleet and snow over hills and mountains. Northwest to north winds will be fresh to strong and gusty. They'll reach gale force on coasts. Right, we were talking earlier on about uh, a crash on the Milford Carragart Road and uh, Neil was expressing his concerns uh, about the safety there and referenced a person who had a, a crash there. And unfortunately, Caroline, you're going to have to put that call through. I, I just neglected to take that. Uh, to take that in. The person who was involved in that uh, uh, crash is on the phone with us. Marie, how are you? I'm uh, good, thanks. Good to have you on the phone. Oh. Uh, unfortunately, the line is not fantastic and uh, it wasn't great being put through. Um, uh, tell us, can you? We'll, we'll see if we can hear what you have to say, Marie, and, and if not, we'll have to get you back at another time on a better line. But what happened on the day? Um, well, I was coming from Milford after having a really good interview um, and I was, so I was really positive and I was on my way back to Chrysler and I was leaving from Milford going on the um, you, know, you know the Kerry Gart the Milford to Kerry Gart Road mm -hmm. and um, so I went around the, the bend at the lake on Cranford and then I went around the next one but as I went around the next one my 
and my, my back wheels spun behind me. I was going one direction. <laughs> it feels like slow motion at the time, mm. but it was quite fast. Um, and then I compensate and go the other way. And before I know it, I'm across the road over a bru, and I'm sliding down from the road. And I'm like now 10 feet below with a verge just below me for another 10 foot. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sitting in the car, holding on to the steering wheel, thinking, am I going to go further down here? And thankfully, I was able to get out of the car and then call the guards. And they were about 20 minutes away, so they were on, a, on the other side of Alfred. But for, for so, a period there, it, it, it must have felt like that end scene in the old, uh, the Italian job. Uh, you know, where the, 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 the bus is uh, teetering on the edge. Was it like that? Did you think, were you sitting there going, is this car going to slide further? And what happens if that does happen? Yeah, that was the situation. I was like, am I, gonna, am I safe to stay in the car? And I thought, no, I have to get out because I'll be safer out the car can go. I'm not going down there. Um, but luckily, when I, got, I was able to get back up through um, like bushes and trees and... Um, on the ground and then I got back up to the wall and then this guy came along with his white fan his name was Kieran um, and he was so good he, he saved us until the guards came and it, um, obviously you start getting into shock then your your body's like um, doesn't, you know, your heart rate goes up and you're, you're shaking so he, and then, yeah. It, yeah so he was really good and got me to sit in his van um, and when the guards came along they were really really good as well um, so and at what really... stage do you start thinking, like, if this had happened, what if a lorry had been coming in the other direction? What if there was someone walking along the road? What if I was going a little bit faster and the car had continued down the I slope? Know. When does that stuff start racing through your head, or were you able to control that, Marie? You're, look, you're looking down back at your car and you're thinking, thank God somebody's looking after me that day because I could have easily rolled over on the side. Mm. And it could have easily been, like I had just passed the car coming the other way, so they had passed me coming the other way. But timing-wise, they were only a minute or two away from the accident happening. Yeah. So it was things like that. There were so many things where I was lucky, but not everybody's lucky um, in these situations. But you know, it always reminds me about the poor um, teenagers that died in Chrysler maybe two years ago mm. on the road. And so the car, car crashes happen, and sometimes people are lucky, sometimes other people are not lucky. And um, I now, was really we, lucky as that I said thing. to Neil earlier, we can't rely on, on, on luck in your case. Like, given the nature of the, 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 the way the car lost handling, uh, and, and, you know, do you think a barrier would have kept you on the road? Oh, definitely. Right. Definitely, yeah. There's no way you would have went over that edge. You would have, you would have stayed on. There's definitely something wrong with that spot. Yeah. And what do you think um, happened? What do you think? Are you real wheel, rear wheel drive, or do you think there's some oil on the road, or what do you think happened, Marie? Uh, it's, it's a similar kind of day as today. It's like gusty and wet. Yeah. And, um, it's just a similar kind of day. The, the damp, it is a, a farming area as well, so there could be lots of just stuff. Just lost on traction, and, yeah. and, and that's it, okay. Yeah. How are you feeling now? Are you okay? Um, yeah, I'm really lucky that I haven't got any injuries. The um, only thing was that after the, the claims process, then it was um, took quite a long time to get through the car insurance company, mm. um, a couple of days, and then even they said that they're they're got a high volume of accidents, and that they were a repair company in their county. They're saying that they've also got a high volume of accidents at the minute. So it could be it's a, it's a bad time of year as well. Yeah, you do. Uh, like, you, you, we're, we're getting reports off them. Thankfully, uh, you know, a lot of them aren't seri involving serious injuries, but I agree. Yeah. Um, is your car written off or can it be repaired, Maureen? It can be repaired, thanks. thankfully. Um, it'll get back on the road soon. With stories to tell? <laughs> Do you remember the time? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Listen, I'm I'm glad uh, I'm glad you're okay. I am glad, yeah. and this is again the the best of us that there were people there that were there when you needed yeah. them and supported you because that's when you needed them, and it's it, it's great that they were there. And listen, um, you know, you you're quite clear that if barriers had been there, you wouldn't have gone over um, and you'd have been kept on the road. And, you know, yeah. there's, there's nothing more uh, we can say than that. This road sounds like it definitely needs barriers because the next time, an extra five kilometres an hour, what what, what might happen, Marie, do you know? Yeah, that's true. Thanks for your time. Good to hear you're doing okay. Yeah, 
Yeah, thank you. All right, take care. Thanks take very care. much. That's Marie there, who was involved in that collision uh, on the Milford Car at, at Mulroy Bay, there overlooking Mulroy Bay that we were talking about uh, a little later on. So um, thanks to Marie for, for telling us, and I'm glad that she's doing well. Uh, Neil is right, a crash barrier is needed on that stretch of road and I can also see a major problem on the opposite side of that road, a little further down where the council cut all the trees, rocks are coming loose at the top and with heavy rain will soon begin to slide down onto the road and could hit passing traffic so a, a high barrier needs to be put up to stop those large stones and rocks rolling onto the road. Thanks James for your comment. Um, Greg, Mike Ryan of the WHO yesterday was praising the UK government for their great handling of COVID. I didn't hear that. Um, I'd love to hear it and the context. I'm a healthcare worker in the community this past 16 years and I got no pay rise. Is this acceptable? Well, I think very few people uh, would say it is acceptable. Um, so what about school secretaries fighting for over 20 years for terms and conditions on the front line of schools? The majority on 12,500 euro, no pay for holidays, no sick pay, no maternity pay. Come on. Well, uh, regular listeners would know that that's a story that we've covered and continue to cover regularly on this programme. Um, it seems there were some positive moves the last time uh, we discussed it. Uh, we shall wait and see what comes uh, from that. I believe it was a Labour Court recommendation. Um, and then there was a period of negotiation to continue between um, uh, both parties. So, listen, if there's any update in relation to that. Uh, another caller says that this pay rise uh, for the councillors is on top of about 20 grand they get in expenses and paid hotel rooms and travel expenses they get each year. Why is there no mention of that? Uh, I'll go through the figures. Obviously, there hasn't been much of that the last day or two. Sorry, the last year or two. Uh, Gareth Brooks is going to bring in a fortune to Dublin with the price of hotel rooms and the tourism. Yeah, indeed. Uh, a lot of crash barriers left damaged and not fixed after cars hit them. An example is one at Dunlewy and another near on Kirch Hotel. Uh, these should be fixed straight away since this is the very point of them. That would seem to make a great deal of sense. Uh, my son was booked to go to a teen disco this weekend. They posted last night the following guidelines. Only teenagers vaccinated can gain entry. So that's my son out. He told me that the mates in his class are just using their brother's vaccination certs. I made it very clear he'll not be going. Uh, sorry, he'll not be doing this. When he sought the refund, he was told the event is going ahead. His decision not to attend is his decision and he'll not be getting a refund. Is this fair? After all, the club posted these guidelines after the booking had started. Um, there is a post up on um, the website that says refunds can be made at ticketstop.ie. Uh, the nightclub in question says that uh, they were contacted by public health um, HSE representatives telling them there are no options, that they can only allow vaccinated teenagers into the teenage disco. They say it's with a heavy heart uh, that they're doing this, but they say the law is the law and they must abide by it. Um, right, so I, I presume it's disappointing for the venue uh, as well. Um, we'll be back bigger, better and stronger than before, offering you the best entertainment in the Northwest. We n do not discriminate discriminate against anyone, uh, they say, but the law is the law. So they're saying it's not they, presumably, that are discriminating. Um, and, and not everyone will feel that, by the way. Um, they are saying that they are being compelled to do so. If they want to open up at all, it's for vaccinated teens uh, only, which is going to leave... It's going to leave a lot of people disappointed and it's parents and guardians that end up picking up the pieces of their... and trying to explain it to a, a, a younger person. It's not easy. Right, um, uh, it is time to take a break as we head towards the news. Stay tuned. Lots coming up on the show, uh, primarily. Michael and Fanula chatting all things entertainment. Have you been watching anything of note? Uh, did you watch, uh, what is it, True Story on Netflix? That's an Owen Hart show. Um, what else have you been watching? I'm a celeb, anything at all. Uh, have you been to the cinema? Have you been to the theatre? Even if you listen to certain music, whatever it might be, it's all about entertainment and just easing our way into the weekend talking nonsense. OK, back after the break. Today's Nine Till Noon show is brought to you in association with Ulster Tyres. Winter is coming. Get your tyres winter ready. Call into Ulster Tyres in Letterkenny and Bally Buffet today. 
Concerts are back. Join me, David James, for a night of the stars in concert on Thursday the 2nd of December in the Strand Hotel Ballylippin. Featuring Robert Mazel, Patrick Feeney, Trudy Lawler, Jim Devine and Shauna McStravis. Tickets 20 euros available from hotel reception or by phoning 074 937 6107. A night of the stars in concert Thursday the 2nd of December the Strand Hotel Ballylippin. Entitlement changes for 30,000 farmers. In this week's Farmers Journal, we reveal government plan for leasing and clawback of entitlements. As the fertilizer crisis escalates, we have five pages of essential advice for beef, sheep, dairy and tillage farmers. In a changing jobs market, don't miss our agri-jobs focus and what to look for when buying a second-hand tractor. Plus, free newspaper for young farmers only inside this week's Irish Farmers Journal. On sale now. At ESB Networks, we're connecting Ireland to a clean electric future. And as part of the National Smart Metering Programme, we're now installing smart electricity meters in your area. Your new smart meter will reduce the need for estimated bills, help you to manage your electricity usage more efficiently, and enable you to access smart electricity products and services. We'll contact you before your meter is installed. Find out more at esbnetworks.ie slash smartmeter. Candles, lanterns, Christmas trees, decorations and all types of lights. Everything you need for Christmas. Experience the magic of Christmas at Cooney's. Our biggest and best Christmas shop has outstanding value on lights and trees. There really is something for everyone at Cooney's Letterkenny Retail Park. Uh, do I just spout into the mic, yeah? OK. So, uh, my name is Stephen and I'm a little teapot. Fairly typical. I'm short. Uh, I'm stout. But I can fly off the handle if the house is cold. You're getting a home energy upgrade with grants from SEAI changed everything. Now I feel warm inside, even when I'm not making tea. Search SEAI Home Energy Upgrade and discover a new world of comfort. Supported by the Government of Ireland. It is unreal. It's Black Friday sale time and Inish Fitness at the Waterfront Hotel Dunlow. Save a massive 20% on memberships from 26th to the 30th of November. Give your loved ones the gift of fitness or treat yourself to a healthier you. Secure your membership or gift voucher with 20% off by calling Inish Fitness Dunlow 074 952590. <laughs> Good morning, you are tuned to Ireland's number one local radio station. This is Highland Radio. We are the 9 till noon show with you 9 till 12 each weekday. Another busy hour on the way, but at the top of the hour, 11 o'clock, it's time to find out what's happening. Uh, in the world of news, it's over to Catherine Gaffney. Thanks, Greg. Good morning. Hotel quarantine may be introduced in response to a new variant emerging from South Africa. The World Health Organization is meeting today to assess the seriousness of the situation. Significant changes are expected to the MICA redress scheme. Campaigners are hopeful the proposals for the long-awaited scheme will finally be ready by next Tuesday following several delays. The enhanced scheme will be complex with improvements said to be timely and reasonable, according to comments made in the Dáil last night. The head of the HSE says he fully appreciates restrictions on children are difficult. Neff is advising against indoor community gatherings for under 12s, including parties, communions and sleepovers. It'll be towards the end of December before COVID-19 vaccines will be rolled out to children aged between 5 and 11. It's expected the jabs will be administered through HSC vaccine centres. As you've been hearing, serious concern has been raised over what's been described as an accident black spot on the Milford to Carrigart Road. The area overlooking Mulroy Bay is said to need safety bar barriers installed there as a matter of urgency following a number of crashes there in recent years. A Fianna Fáil councillor has acknowledged that significant capital investment needs to be pumped into Letterkenny University Hospital. The hospital has been in the spotlight every day this week from being the most overcrowded in Ireland to over 22,000 people on waiting lists and almost 130 staff vacancies. Meanwhile, the hospital is the most overcrowded in Ireland today yet again. 45 people were awaiting admission there this morning with eight on trolleys in its ED while a further 37 were waiting on wards. 
Walk-in booster vaccination clinics will be available for healthcare workers and those aged between 60 and 69 in Letterkenny this weekend. The booster jabs will be administered to those in this cohort who have reached an interval of at least 152 days since their second dose vaccine. And snow is expected to fall in parts of the northwest due to Storm Arwen. There will also be strong winds with yellow wind warnings for Donegal, Sligo and Mayo from 3pm. That's it for now. We're back with an update for you at 12 noon. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Catherine. A very, very quick break and then it's Michael and Fanula. There are those who fear change, those who welcome change and those who drive change. At Nissan, we've always believed in driving change. Now, the all-new Nissan Qashqai is here. With the style and tech you want and the power you need, it's the future-proof family car. So, are you ready for change? The all-new Nissan Qashqai, electrified with mild hybrid power. Book a test drive today at nissan.ie. Nissan, innovation that excites. You're very welcome back uh, to the programme and we welcome into studio, firstly, Fanula. Hiya, Fanula. Nice to have you with us. Hello, how are you? I I'm can't believe we're alone again. I know. But Naturally. Sure, look, just turn to your right and now you'll see. I know, in the lovely new glasses, so handsome. You look about 12, Michael, in a good way. <laughs> 12 in a good way. Yeah. That suits me because I've been acting 12 for a very long time. Well, now your looks match your now your looks match your demeanour. <laughs> Thank you very much. Very good. Listen, it's great to have you both back. With uh, do you watch much telly and stuff this week, Fanula? Well, I've been uh, I've been you had a really um, bad week of watching stuff last week. I know I had a bad week watching stuff last week, but this week I haven't been feeling well, so I was off for a few days. Not right. COVID, oh. thank God. Uh, that's why I owe Michael an apology. I hope the play was good. I missed the play down in the theatre um, uh, on Tuesday, but. Um, so I actually have managed to watch a, a decent amount of TV when I'm lying around feeling sorry for myself, wishing I had somebody to make me a cup of tea. But did you watch decent TV? That's uh, the question. Well, some of it was absolutely brilliant. I absolutely loved some of it, was really happy with it. And then others of it, you'll be happy to know, I returned to my state of, I don't really know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we missed that. So, come here, what did you watch? What was your highlight of the week? Let's start with that. Um, well, my highlight of the week was Hawkeye. Hawkeye started on Wednesday. Um, it's the new Marvel. You know, I'm obsessed and really we need to probably stop talking about Marvel so much on this show. Um, but it started with the first two episodes uh, dropped, as they say, uh, just this Wednesday. And it's going to be an episode a week now running up to Christmas. Um, Hawkeye is the bow and arrow character for anybody who's not very familiar with the oh, Avengers. the worst born film. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he's and he's in is this. He a super, is, is that fella a, a superhero though? I mean, has he contributed anything over the course of like he fires arrows? Well, it's not the, really explained. Are they magical arrows because they keep appearing in his uh, what do you call the quiver? Quiver. quiver. Um, no, they they seem to be more that they're it's more that they're kind of electronic -y, as in they have different things. Some of them explode, some right. of them have grappling hooks, some of them do all kinds of things. But in all fairness, first of all, I I've never shot a bow and arrow, but I'm assuming it's hard. Yeah. So I'm giving him that. <laughs> Two, he shoots bows and arrows while running, jumping off buildings, you know. Aliens come, he takes them down. I'm nothing against him. This one, I actually, the reason why I really like this show is, um, it's, a, I mean, it's only the first two episodes, um, but there's something very uh, familiar about it, and I think it will end up being one of the one of the nicest of the TV shows yeah. that Marvel has put out as what part is the of the production scene. level like in the TV shows versus the obviously oh, the big cinematical for any of them. It's it, it's the same. Yeah, I have to say now. Um, WandaVision was very much like that I wasn't mad about the Falcon and the Winter Soldier but this one is fabulous it's set in um, uh, New York it's set over Christmas it really has that kind of a feel but it really kind of plays into the corniness of that kind of a you know Christmas in New York 
premise thing on the movies and that mm. type of stuff. There's lots of fighting. There's lots of explosions. Hawkeye is there and there's this young girl who he doesn't realise, but he actually saved her earlier on in one of the Avengers movies. And um, since then, she has, uh, you know, learned a lot of the skills that he has and martial arts and different things like that and archery and different things like that. And then it turns out that he becomes uh, targeted for another alter ego that he had, that if anybody had watched the uh, full Avengers movies, you'd kind of know what I'm talking about. So I don't want to give too much away in it because when when you're watching the thing, it all comes you through. You watched the two of them. I watched the two. Oh, my no, God, yeah. I watched them back to back. It was absolutely... I would totally... And when the third one comes, I might wait for two more and then watch the four of them in a row. <laughs> it really was good because you, you could watch it kind of like a movie. It really has that kind of quality value and aesthetic suit and that kind of thing. And it had that sort of a fun element that... Yeah. How long's the run? Do you know how is, many seri- episodes are in the series? Oh, it's only running up as far as Christmas, so it's their own, they all only run for like six to eight weeks. Right, so you can watch it like three two-hour films almost. Yeah. Yeah, all right, okay, cool. Sounds fantastic. Have you watched this yet, Michael? Did you say you're holding off on this or something? Yeah, I'm going to hold off on this one till Christmas. I'll wait till it's finished. I did that with Loki as well, which I loved, and I ended up watching it in two blocks. So I had two three-hour blocks, which really felt like two movies mm. uh, on different nights. So I'll do the same with Hawkeye. I've read great things about it. Fanula, yeah, I read that the people behind, the guy behind it is using the Hallmark, that one of his influences is those Hallmark Christmas films and all mm. that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a good one to watch. Out of 10 full marks for you. Oh, I, I really, really enjoyed it, I have to say, because as I said, it goes right back to the what you want from a comic book type of situation, as in, you know, it's farcical, but it kind of takes the mick of itself when it is farcical. It's got all that kind of Christmas in New York, like explosions happening behind, you know, sent out trying to raise right, money okay. for their, go- you know, massive big Christmas trees and stuff. So it really just kind of takes that even, like I said, that kind of Home Alone sort of a Christmas yeah. feel type thing All with right. it. Brilliant. Full marks. Um, mm. You were in the theatre watching The Enemy uh, Within on Green on Theatre. Um, I, I mean, obviously you thoroughly enjoyed it. I think everyone who's, everyone who's gone to see it thought it was great. Yeah, I absolutely loved it. Um Great performances. Um, I was surprised. The play was not what I was expecting, but in a good way. I thought it was going to be very monologue heavy and very angsty and kind of, you know, kind of amorphous in content. It's actually really plot driven, very straightforward. You could easily turn it into a feature film, no bother, because there's a lot happens. And it's surprisingly humorous. You have two of those guys uh, bring a lot of comedy. It's a hugely enjoyable show and not what I was expecting, but I did expect great performances and I was right about that. The, the guys were fantastic on stage. Um, yeah, I would heap praise on it. And I loved, uh, yeah, I loved the ending. I love what Freel did at the end. I, I just thought, as I was sitting there, I was like, how is this going to wrap up? How is he going to do this? And then I really liked what he did to end it. And uh, I shouldn't have been that surprised because other than Dancing at Lunacy, which I'm not a huge fan of, Love translations. I love uh, Philadelphia. Here I come. I love uh, any of the, 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 the anything I've, I've seen before. So I should have known that I would probably like this a lot. And like the cast who have said in other interviews this week, they don't understand why this isn't done more often. I don't know why it's not done more often either. It's 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 a very enjoyable production. Um, I, I I I understand. I'm not calling them out on that, but. I don't understand why they don't understand why it's not done more often because there's lots of stuff that, you know, gathers a bit of dust and it's... Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True enough. That's true. That's absolutely true. Um, It's not a criticism of that commentary. It was just like, you're doing it now. I, I can imagine. I think maybe, I know, but enough to <laughs> maybe they stay away from it. it. It's a it's a play which has a large cast of men who are all more or less of the same age in the same costume. That may be a turn off unless you have incredibly dynamic and charismatic performers, which we have in this production. It might be a play that might not work that mm. well, but in a production like this one, when you have this cast, it's going to fly. So I think maybe that's a turn off. Yeah, and also to presumably, you know, if you're looking for a broad audience now, if you go and watch it, you'll understand. But you are talking about a historical ca- character and a, and, a, and a period of his life. You you know, what is the plot line? Do you know what I mean? I suppose when you, you're because you're, there's an awful lot of money goes into these productions, presumably. Mm. Like, how do you sell it? How do you market it? Do you know what I mean? And 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 obviously it's tied in now with the column kill celebrations and it's all relevant yes. and it's getting great reviews. But I can understand why there might be a hesitancy to sort of, you know, how do you market it? Like, you know, absolutely, yeah. And again, yeah. And it's uh, because I didn't 
know the production um, and they didn't mention its content in any of the advertising. I didn't realize that it, it does really work. It's very plot driven. It's almost like an adventure film. You know, a lot of stuff is like, without telling anything away, I'm not giving anything away, but it's about his decisions he has to make. He has to go away and do certain things. He has to come back. He goes away. Um, there's a heck of a lot happens in this. And again, I was delighted. I was like, I thought it was just going to be this guy on stage monologuing his misery but it's not at all it's not at all that's not- this program <laughs> that's me uh come here um and it's a it's a blended opportunity so people uh can go and, and they can go watch it live like you did um but it's also going to be available to stream is it the type of production that lends it itself yeah well, oh, just yeah. sitting at home yeah. watching it yeah, it is. I mean, I, I, I obviously I, I know it's going live from I think this or going online from the second to the fifth. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I have it here in front of me. Second to the fifth of December, it'll be available online. Um, absolutely, you can totally watch it because again, it, it comes back to the performances. These guys, when you Sean McGinley, Bosco Hogan, you've a lot of these guys who are you know uh, safe hands. Didn't say fans. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're 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 good. All right. Uh, so that's the enemy within on green on theatre. Full marks uh, from you by yes. signs of things. Completely, yeah, thoroughly. How do you stream it? Because I'm de- I it missed goes it. On green on. Uh, goes I was in bed the, with my uh, limbs, go so I didn't get to go. <laughs> that's, that's okay, Fanula. I forgive you the way you forgave me for the whole one. <laughs> I was wondering. You go to on green on uh, the website. Oh, it's going to be on the tickets book, that your, way. Your Brilliant. And I have to say as well, I thoroughly enjoyed the show, but obviously I was watching it through the tears of disappointment. <laughs> Glancing yeah. at your empty seat. Too. Empty seat. <laughs> empty seat. And people stopping at the break and they were like, all right, Michael, someone stood you up, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually really quite heartbreaking. In fairness, I am upset about Speaking it. Speaking of heart, our first day you is you see anything about True Story on Netflix? It's a Kevin Hart... Uh, uh, no, I, I keep looking at it and I'm like, I'm just not sure, can it. I do it? I watched the first series, but is this one of these strange... It's not about him, but it could be about him. Yeah. Uh, you know, he is a comedian, mm. as he is. You know, he's on Ellen and he's on the Ellen DeGeneres show and all that kind of stuff. He's got a brother who's a bit suspicious, Wesley Snipes. Um, well, uh, which I couldn't believe. I thought Wesley Snipes was persona non grata for something. I can't remember what I, it was I think it, he supposedly did back in the day. Well, they referenced being in, 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 in prison for years for murder, and, and he wasn't, as far <laughs> as I'm aware. But I think it kind of is sort of saying, I don't know, maybe this, you know, redemption, uh-huh. what it is. Uh, and he his character is... I don't know. He plays an interesting character, but his brother, anyway, and his, he he might have. I haven't watched it all. I've only watched the first one, uh, and it's fine. Like it's all set up quite mm-hmm. interesting. I don't know how much you can give away, but I'm not giving anything away. But he takes someone back to the hotel room. Something happens to them. What do they do? They bring in shady characters to try and sort it out. Is the brother involved? Blah blah blah. I suspect, and I can't say that I already know where this is going. If you know what I mean, because the brother is, you know. Looking to get money off his uh, off his off his younger, more famous uh, brother. Who, but I don't know what I'm. I'm kind of, the only reason I mention it is to see what other people think. Oh wait, oh wait, six sixty twenty five thousand. It's set up as the wor- worst nightmare for anyone. Top of his career, multi millionaire, and it's all going to be taken away from him potentially. But I haven't worked up the course and, to watch the second episode yet. But how did you find Kevin Hart's performance? Because that's the only thing I've done. Is I've He's watched fine. some of his interviews. He considers this him. Uh, uh, so I heard him being interviewed and one of the things and you were like ah oh god you need to take a deep breath it, this is him giving his audience a new level of himself yeah but you know and a his lot of com- dramatic comedians ability. do this and they start switching over to drama but they tend to do it quite well I think it's uh, a question that's been answered already I mean Robin but, Williams was brilliant in any straight roles he played I'm sure there's other examples that you can think of but I don't he's not reinventing the wheel here you know no, no, just in his interview, that's what he was all he, about. Yeah. It's all about his fans and giving his his fans what they want, which is him in these more dramatic roles. And I was like, I mean, he's been in a couple of when he did that fatherhood, and he was fi- he was fine in it. I don't. The movie wasn't particularly great. It was another Netflix movie that he had. So that's why I was wondering how. I'm, I'm still it, waiting for he his, is, his he's perfect, massive he's dramatic perfectly role. Perfectly fine in it, you know. I mean the Wesley Snipes character is kind of overplayed a little bit I think but Kevin Hart plays it straight no problem at all you know he's pretty good with his emotions and stuff but as I say it's not unprecedented that comedians make that crossover Mm. Uh, right okay Um, so see what other people think out there none of you has watched the new Tiger King obviously no I still can't do it (laughs) yeah it's much ado about nothing 
it keeps popping up, but like but that. But it is much ado uh-huh. about nothing, and it's quite short. But it's, it's cashing in on the brand, obviously. There's so it? much other stuff. Yeah, out I there mean, to watch. they 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 pursue a couple of plot lines, but I mean, at the end of it, it's it's not. No. I finished it since we last spoke. Right. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else out watching that? Oh eight six sixty twenty five thousand. It's fine. I think I probably spent more of my time on my phone than watching it. Yeah, and I'm just like, there's so much other stuff out there now, particularly coming into Christmas. There's a lot of different series and different things starting, so I kind of... I sort of, when I'm stuck for something to watch, I might flick onto it. All right, so uh, we read um, a comment there just briefly as it relates to the... Um Teen disco that was due to take place tonight in Letterkenny. Uh, the management say they were contacted by public health, and the public health told them that the only way that they can run that if they strictly enforce vaccination certs. Uh, obviously, a lot of people were disappointed uh, because uh, not all, not all teenagers are vaccinated. They said that this information was posted after they booked tickets, and management said that they had uh, they had no alternative uh, but to enforce the public health guidelines. Um, not that they didn't want to, but you know what I mean. Uh, But anyway, they've released a statement uh, since saying, after much deliberation of management this morning, sadly, we've decided to cancel the teenage event tonight as we feel it would be unfair of us to discriminate by not allowing unvaccinated teenagers to attend. So a bit of political commentary in there too. Uh, Tickets will be refunded. We'd like to extend our apologies to our patrons for any inconvenience caused. And fair play to uh, them for coming out and saying that. Uh, And now it's a tough uh, one, isn't it? it? But... um, you want I to think kind of... those students that maybe uh, took the leap and decided to get vaccinated might also be disappointed now. All right, we'll yeah. be back with more after these. Today's Nine Tone In show is brought to you in association with Ulster Tires. Are your tires ready for winter? Call into Ulster Tires in Letterkenny and Bally Buffet today. Buy a ticket. Buy a ticket in Highland Radio's Mega Draw to win a car. To win a car. Get your ticket by November 30th and automatically enter an extra draw Woo-hoo! before the big draw. Big, big draw. One lucky winner will walk away with 2,000 euros. Imagine, that's Christmas all wrapped up. Christmas sort. The draw will take place on Wednesday, December 1st on the 9 till noon show. 9 till noon. And you're still in with a chance to win the Kia X seat worth over 28,000 euros. 28 grand. It's that simple to win that car. To get your ticket, log on to highlandradio.com. Highland Radio, exceeding your expectations. Don't miss the crazy Black Friday deals right now at Watson Hire in Ettercandy. Up to 70% off the recommended retail price on hand and power tools, paint, homeware, clothing and much more. Many are at clearance prices that won't be repeated. Loads of great present ideas now reduced. That's amazing Black Friday deals right now at Watson Hire, Kiltoy, Ettercandy. Visit watsonhire.ie or see Facebook for daily offers. Mark James Menswear Straban. Visit us on Railway Road to celebrate the launch of our brand new store and enjoy your for a pound plus generous discounts for all starting shoppers. Same street, same top brands, same great service, only bigger, brighter and better. At Mark James Menswear, Railway Road Straban. Patterson's Black Friday sale is now on with fantastic discounts across all departments. Appliances, beds, mattresses, dining table and chairs, suites, furniture and giftware. Come visit their massive sleep centre on the first floor. Christmas decorations and gifts now on display. Patterson's Black Friday sale is now on at the Hall Lifford. Donegal's favourite SUV, the Kia Sportage, is going all new for 2022. Call to iMotors on Saturday the 27th and Sunday the 28th of November and see for yourself the amazing new spec, technology and value. Test drive and buy the new Sportage at iMotors. Call 074 913 Hi, Theresa Mannion here with a road safety alert for fog. When driving in fog, use your fog lights, slow down and drive with caution. Open your window when stopped at a junction and listen out for traffic. Don't forget to turn off your front and rear fog lights when fog clears. Visit rsa.ie from the Road Safety Authority. At Letterkenny Shopping Centre, we're already dreaming about the festive season. So why not make a start, park for free and enjoy your Christmas shopping this year. Letterkenny Shopping Centre, bringing you the time at... 
21 minutes past 11. You're welcome back to the programme. A caller says, I'm watching Made on Netflix. Has anyone seen it? It's fantastic. Uh, lots of people are raving about it, Fanula. You haven't seen yeah, it? Yeah, no, I haven't. I kind of, I think I'm going to hold it now and sort of sit like that over the Christmas but when I have nothing else to watch it. and run through it. Yeah. All of my friends are all texting me saying, why are you not talking about Made? It's awesome. Right, OK, well, we will be just about eight and weeks know, after everybody else. I know. Oh, no, well, I won't talk about it then. What happens it's just everybody. I know one of my uh, uh, my my future son-in-law was saying one of his guys at work is watching it and he came into work and he was like, I don't know, I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm just really worried about her. So apparently you really get into the characters in it. Right, OK. Um, you haven't watched that, Michael. I, I know you haven't. I can see by the look on your face. No, 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 I haven't. It's just Greg, I watched Kin in one sitting over the weekend. I'm not sure if it was worth it or not. My first thought is how the Kinsler gang survived as long as they did. Uh, they were not the smartest gangsters on the block and made some very stupid decisions seemingly without thinking of the consequences. I didn't think the ending was great either. He's both like... No, it's not. No, King, I didn't watch. Right? King, okay. No, Hidden Assets Hidden we're both Assets watching. Is what you're watching. Hi, Greg, King. Michael and Fanula. As we come into Christmas, I want to ask, is there a film or films Christmas related for the Christmas period staples that you watch every Christmas? Examples of ones I watch, Home Alone, One and Two, Plane, Trains, Automobiles, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, Love Actually, my favourite, It's a Wonderful Life. Be interested uh, or do you avoid festive movies? I kind of go with the flow. I don't think I seek out a particular film and go, right, it's Christmas time now. I think yeah. blo anything blockbustery, you know, I like uh, anything. I don't think it necessarily has to have a Christmas theme. No, I have to, because the sound of music in our house, if the sound of music is on any time over the Christmas, you will always find people in my mother's house will eventually graduate to the room that it's on yes. and we'd all end up sitting around the floor watching it because it was the only vid video we had when we had our video player in the mid-80s um, with the Sound of Music and the Jazz Singer the yeah. only two videos that we played over and over again but um, I have to say I love the what used to be the Hallmark Channel and now it's gone over to be uh, Christmas movies uh, it, um, they used to be the Hallmark Channel and they used to just completely translate over to all those Christmassy uh, love stories and all this kind of thing and I used to love that what about Not you so much now. what's in your PDF for Christmas last year I watched a lot of to him I never even <laughs> used your name sorry so, you knew I was talking to you I didn't even use your as name as soon as you said PDF <laughs> as soon as you said PDF you knew spreadsheet yeah I watched last year I, I watched a lot of Christmas movies last year and I don't know if I'll watch a lot of them this year, but I actually went towards sort of horror Christmas movies. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So there's things like, uh, I'll throw a couple out here. There's there's a 1972 movie called Tales from the Crypt, and it's got, you know, three different stories. It's got Peter Cushing and Joan Collins and stuff like that. And that was great crack. It's sort of an anti-Christmas movie, and just, you know, the, the different stories are good. The Joan Collins story is brilliant. Um, and there's a Fred Astaire movie called The Man in the Santa Claus Suit, which is a very, very Christmas movie. It doubles down and it's about a guy, magically guy played by Fred Astaire. It's one of 1979 movie. And but if you're going to get anyone to play a magical, you know, guy who he basically rents out Santa Claus suits, but the Santa Claus suits then transform and again it's three different stories but you're not like watching that to get into the Christmas spirit are you they just happen to be a genre of films with a Christmas theme that you watch in December or are yeah, you well, the, the second one is the Fred Astaire one is very Christmassy ah oh, it's lovely it's sweet and it just gives me that sort of yeah I like, like that Tim yeah. Allen's The Christmas Claus is it yeah Ah, yeah, the, the, yeah, similar sort of theme. Yeah, the themes have been done before. So there are two that, that kind of leap out for me. Um, I can't think of any that I would watch. It. I would, yeah, this year. I can't I believe, that. like, if Elf is, is, is that not a, yes. a go-to Elf? Everyone. I watched uh, it last year, yeah. yeah. I watched, yeah. That's What's your go-to Christmas movies, people? Text or WhatsApp 0866025000 or drop uh, a comment in the... In the um, on social media if you're watching us there um, Elf what other ones I think I think our listener mentioned most of them Elf is the only one I can add to that Bad Santa's in there is it no? there's a couple of yeah. newer ones you know the one that Kurt Russell has done now there's two of those Santa Claus movies that he's done I saw the first one of those three years ago and I really really liked it and that was super Christmassy yeah and then there's a movie called Noel with uh, what do you call that lady she was in The Accountant with Ben Affleck you loved that one didn't you 
No, you yeah. know, it was actually one of the one of the young people that did the uh, review for yes, you last you. Christmas. Well done, thank you. That's what that, I tell you. She that's... was raving about that. Well Noella, yes, I must dig that out that again. That is why you're I the it. boss. I think it's on Amazon. Yeah, that's that why one. you're yeah. the master and I'm the servant. <laughs> yeah. I like it. <laughs> that's what made me watch it. That review last year was yeah, so good. She was, I was so like, on yeah. it, that girl. But like, do we not mostly name. like say if we're talking about it, like you know, we're getting your Christmas jammies, like the fire if that's your thing, Christmas tree on. Like, you not sit down and people watch Shrek or their favourite Disney film or maybe their favourite... Like, do people really want to watch or do people tend to watch... I, well, I, I think it's, it depends. Obviously. I think, yeah, and a lot of families, though, they have started that kind of tradition. I know a few friends of mine now that do it and my sister's only dying for her kids to get old enough to watch Elf because that's her favourite movie in the whole world. So she can sit down with them all and watch it on, on, on Christmas Eve. But I know people now that watch, like, The Muppets Christmas Carol... Everybody's in their PJs, yeah, you know, exactly. everybody's yeah, in their PJs about, early, yeah. that kind of thing, Die which is an awesome movie. Best Christmas film? Oh, for, Christmas. for, I know, it's always the best, best Christmas film. Do we have that isn't? debate now or wait till the Christmas <laughs> special? No, no, no. Okay. I like Die Hard as a Christmas movie. Yeah, all right, okay. It's got all the bets. Uh, right, yo, uh, let me see, what should we go to next? Uh, what, I want to quickly ask you, why is Ozark, is there's not a new series of Ozark? Yeah, the, yeah. there's two reasons it's on there. Yes, the, the fourth and final series is back. Another, by the way, sorry, uh, we were looking for examples of people who are, are more famous as comedians crossing over to drama. There's a perfect example contained. Jason uh, Bateman. Bateman. Yeah, he's yeah. brilliant in this. He, brilliant he, in he, and he, he, uh, he, he's really good in how he plays dramatic roles because there's a mm. bit of humour in there. Uh, yes. You know, he's got a particular knack. Yes, He doesn't Absolutely. change completely. He just doesn't say one-liners. It's hard to describe. He just doesn't pitch it. I think I was watching him. I, I, I'm watching season two at the moment and getting ready for season four. Um, yeah, he doesn't pitch it as quite as high as he does in Arrested Development or his various comedy movies like Horrible Bosses. He just knows, he really knows how to pitch it. So you are amused, but you still, in a, in something like Ozark, you believe the threat. You think, well, he's being a bit funny here, but his life's actually in danger and the threat is real. So he, he really knows what to do. He really pitches. But then this guy has been, he's been doing this since he was like 11 or 12. I've been watching him since the early 1980s. Like he's a pro. Like this guy is a pro's pro. Um, so Ozark is back for season four in January. They're doing seven oh, episodes. Oh, I'm but, just listen. I was thinking right. That's I my weekend. Was I was thinking that's no, my but weekend sorted. But I'm watching. The reason I put Why it on is because I'm sorry seen to torture you, but I'm watching season two. I'm going to watch season two because I've never seen them, so it's I'm only watching. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's it is. It's fantastic it's, show. It is, and it becomes even more so. Breaking Bad light. As it goes on. Ish, yeah. yeah, I mean, do you oh. not get a sense of Breaking Bad off it? Oh, I totally do. Even in season one, which I watched a couple of years ago and I loved, I could see the DNA of Breaking Bad in it. And it's just, it's a family. They've been money laundering and things are getting more and more out of control, particularly towards the end of season one. Season two picks up, which I started this week, and they're trying to tidy up the mess that uh, fell upon them at the end of season one. But the threat is real. You have Janet McTeer showing up, love her. Um, so I'm going to watch season two, season three over the next few weeks. It's back in January. And what they're doing for the last season is they're showing seven episodes early in the year. And then later in the year, they're going to do part two of season four. And that brings the whole story <sighs> to a conclusion. Okay, right. Fair so enough. Finished next year, next year. Um, okay. Um, Mary Caroline says Home Alone is her Christmas movie. She also loves Fred Astaire. Um, Mary G, sorry, Mary Jo on YouTube. I love The Great Escape because that's that's kind of what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. it might be a one film that you go to. Uh, right, th uh, guys, thanks for that. That was it. When, I'm, when my dad splashed out on new videos, The Great Escape was the that next was one we you, had. After you, the, <laughs> yeah, we the tape three. snapped in The Sound of Music. <laughs> yeah, The Great Escape. All right, uh, some more comments <laughs> from our listeners. Uh, Christmas with the Cranks. Yeah, yeah. I never, yeah. Okay, indifference in the studio. One of, uh, oh, my favourite time of the year is the last two weeks of November and December. Saturday, Channel 5, housework done, shopping done, fire lit, feet up in the Christmas movie. I don't care how bad it is, I'm on the couch. Exactly, that is mm. it. And that's what we all look forward to. 
the Christmas Chronicles 1 and 2 on Netflix. That's the one that um, uh, Michael was talking about yeah. there. Yeah. I loved the first one now. The second first one was one, very good. Yeah, the second yeah. one, less so, but it was still a really good, really nice watch. And, and Goldie Hawn story. is in the second one, isn't she? She mm-hmm. kind of has more to do in the second one, am I right? Uh, yes, well, yeah. yes, she plays uh, Mrs. Claus to Kurt Russell's Santa. And yeah. Yellowstone mentioned, a caller asks, when Yellowstone coming back on TV? And that is the show that stands out for me yeah. that lots of people seem to enjoy, lots of people watch, it's Kevin lots Costner. of people text in about it. And we never watch it. Watch it, or it, talk it, about it never starts. It. It, it hasn't started anywhere from the beginning again. Ah. And you can't watch it back, as far as I'm aware, on the RTE player. Because, you know, the way you can only watch sort of RTE stuff and that on the player. Sometimes you can't watch the stuff that they've imported in, and that's obviously an American show. What? So I keep an eye out for it if anybody it's not finds. It's on your Peacock channel, is it? No. It's not on my Peacock channel, which is. Uh, uh, upsetting me now. Okay. I'm waiting for uh, it to be right, I am going to have to maybe give in and watch a few episodes of that and see because I'm rewatching stuff now because I've run out of stuff to watch. So I've oh. watched the first three series of Luther, uh, which is quite good. It yeah, results. you're not the biggest fan though, are you? You are. I, I actually have enjoyed it this time round. You know, it's not okay. bad at all actually. Okay. Um, it's quite good. He's a good character. He's a good character. And there's no Manhunt. I think Manhunt has spoiled me for British detective shows because I think it's just the pinnacle. I really do. I just love that show so much. I watched it there, second season, and I'm just gagging for more. I wish they'd hurry up and give us season three. All right. Yeah. I like no. Manhunt as well. Yeah, I don't know why they don't it's do it. Just more. not quite as much as uh, Michael did. It's, it's <laughs> I love it. Like, no, but I'm watching no, Luther. I'm on season five face. of You're Luther. Going, I enjoyed it. But what's it all about? It was yeah. <laughs> no. I was more thinking about Luther because I'm on season five of Luther now, and I've watched it all the oh, way you're through. Oh, you doing it again? Yeah, it's on Alibi, so it okay. started right back at the beginning yeah. on late on a Saturday night. So I just taped it. Then I was taped it. God, I'm taped old. It? Yeah, taping over the sound of music. Don't I, don't, you know? <laughs> I, I pop the tabs. I yeah. pop the tabs so I don't tape over the sound of music. You know, you put some tape <laughs> over that hole. But I was, um, yeah. Taped. Those boxes. If you can see the boxes behind me, there's brown boxes behind me. They're full of VHS tapes. Like I'm. Serious. They're full of VHS tips from know, the nineteen nineties. Do you have a VHS player? I have loads of them. Oh, yeah, I have two or three of them. Right yeah. Then. Yeah. Uh, what, 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 oh, you come out with the most bizarre things. Do you have a yes. VHS player? I have loads of them. <laughs> yes, I have. Yeah, multiple VHS players. I have uh, one that plays E play and L L E P and L P, and I have one then it's handy for converting because I convert a lot of these things. In front of me here, I've got DVD rips of my old. VHS tape stuff that's really rare that you can't buy or stream and I have it so I, 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 I preserve it is it. your passion though preserve it it is your passion yeah. it is you your kind passion. of want to be in his will though don't you I'd love to get first I dibs on know, that room because that would cost an awful lot of money for me to throw into a skip like no. skips <laughs> No, no so, I just think you'd spend ages just. No, no. Just, I'd love to know what the final figure no, is. You'd put take, a lot of work into no, this, and, I would and be, you'd really love to go. And I'd take. Even, I'd, I'd just bring in one of those. I'd even take them out of the boxes so that you could get more into the skip in one load. <laughs> oh, oh no! Yeah. I would go one of those. Um, no, not only bring in one of those Greg, guys from Cash in the Attic. Do you remember Greg, the show years yeah. ago? <laughs> Greg That's is not only mean. out of the will, but you're get, not getting the Christmas card this year, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to bring in a Cash in the Attic guy, and let's just put a price on it. Let's just put a price. Put a price on it and see what uh, it is. Cash in the Attic. That used to be a great show. Do you remember I they'd come into your house? Enjoy that, yeah, yeah, and they'd be like, yeah. oh, yeah, I'd love to buy a new set E. I need 100 euros. And then they got up to your attic and they'd be like, oh, yeah, this pen if they went was up to once my attic, chewed by. If they went up into my attic, I'll tell you, they'd be in for some <laughs> shock. Such a Deck the Halls uh, Christmas movie is good, says Eamon on Facebook. Eamon, thank you very much for that. Keep your suggestions and stuff yeah. coming in. Uh, we might maybe do a definitive top ten or something for our Christmas special. Yeah. I don't know what you uh, think like that there. Okay. Yeah, okay. in the we'll different see. genres. Exactly. Yeah. There's, there's maybe a, a definitive good, top three. There's a couple of good action ones that are Christmassy. Yeah, defo. Yeah. Ernie um, has one or two as well. Right, we're going to be coming back with more reviews. Uh, so far, Hawkeye on Disney+. Plus. Uh, Fanula rated that one a solid 10 out of uh, 10. Mm. And I think you were, it's just a return to form. I think yeah, that helps, doesn't I, it? For absolutely. You? I just think it's one of those things you're just going to sit down and enjoy it. It's, yeah. And anybody that likes the kind of crash bang explosion y bit of. Right. So far, also, uh, we have um, The Enemy Within, a live production at On Green on Theatre. Uh, Michael loved that as well. Yes. And he's uh, watching Ozark, and you're giving that a strong number out of 10, I presume, on Netflix. Oh, yeah, like a nine or a 10 different episodes. Yeah, yeah 100%. Uh, 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 the Breaking Bad comparison is very good. And, but and it's not It's not a rip-off. And I call no. it Breaking Bad Light, and it's probably doing it a disservice. Mm. 
there are very few shows that you can recommend and say, you know, you're going to really enjoy this mm. if someone hasn't watched it and you feel jealous that they've got it all to watch. And for me, Ozark would be, be one of those. OK, back uh, with more with yeah. Michael and uh, we'll be starting with Fanula after this break. Today's Nine Till Noon show is brought to you in association with Ulster Tires. Winter is coming. Get your tires winter ready. Call in to Ulster Tires in Letterkenny and Valley Buffet today. It's time. Time to wander through a land of natural wonder where breathtaking views are all around. Time to fill those lungs with fresh air on an unforgettable cycle trail. Oh, that's gorgeous. Time to bag a bargain or five on an epic afternoon shopping spree. It's time to embrace a giant adventure and visit Morn this autumn. Start planning for your next giant adventure at visitmornmountains.co.uk. Travel advice and guidelines apply. Visit nidirect.gov.uk. Check ahead with providers. Candles, lanterns, Christmas trees, decorations and all types of lights. Everything you need for Christmas. Experience the magic of Christmas at Cooney's. Our biggest and best Christmas shop has outstanding value on lights and trees. There really is something for everyone at Cooney's Letterkenny Retail Park. At Tesco, nothing's stopping us this Christmas. Try our Tesco finest Irish whole and half leg of lamb, now half price. Or stock up on Tesco Irish potatoes, 1 kg, 49 cent. And Tesco lemon and lime, 5 pack, 89 cent. And celebrate with 33% off over 200 wines, like Oyster Bay Sauvignon Blanc on Campo Viejo Tempranillo, 75 CL. Book your Christmas home delivery or click and collect now at tesco.ie. Tesco, every little helps. Enjoy alcohol responsibly. Entitlement changes for 30,000 farmers. In this week's Farmers Journal, we reveal government plan for leasing and clawback of entitlements. As the fertilizer crisis escalates, we have five pages of essential advice for beef, sheep, dairy and tillage farmers. In a changing jobs market, don't miss our agri-jobs focus and what to look for when buying a second-hand tractor. Plus, free newspaper for young farmers only inside this week's Irish Farmers Journal. On sale now. If you're age 60 to 69, you will soon be offered a COVID-19 vaccine booster dose. COVID-19 vaccines offer protection from serious illness, but this may weaken over time. The booster is recommended to give you the best possible protection. When it's time for your vaccination centre appointment, you will receive a text message from the HSC. It's very important to take up your booster appointment. For more information, visit hse.ie or call HSE Live on 1800 700 700 from the HSC. It's Black Friday sale time in Inish Fitness at the Waterfront Hotel Dunlow. Save a massive 20% on memberships from 26th to the 30th of November. Give your loved ones the gift of fitness or treat yourself to a healthier you. Secure your membership or gift voucher with 20% off by calling Inish Fitness Dunlow 074 95 290. Okay, you're very welcome back uh, to the uh, to the program. Good job. You don't have to listen to the, what happens during the uh, uh, the ad break. Fascinating stuff, Fanula. Okay, <laughs> uh, right now, um, music wise, Gareth Brooks. It's a huge story. I have to have a word with you about that before we go back to TV. Four hundred thousand tickets sold. People said he couldn't do it anymore. You know, a lot of the. Uh, People, you know, yeah. can be a bit snobby about these things. We're like, oh, he couldn't, he can't sell that amount of tickets anymore. But I'll tell you, yeah, it was amazing because to be honest, I I did feel he'd sell them in, uh, but it was a little bit slower. They were slower selling, I'd say, than the, you know, than the last time round. But then again, I mean, since he was last supposed to come, he hasn't had an original album no, out. Yeah, he's done You're remix. Going for his back catalogue, aren't he's you? done yeah. remixes. He's done different things like that. So I was amazed at. Uh, just how much people wanted to see him. Like one of my sisters is in her thirties, and she was like crying down the phone to me. Can wow. you get Can you get me tickets? I really want to go. And I was like, I would have thought he would have been totally out of her wheelhouse. Maybe at the time then, because he had a couple of songs that you know that had been charts. But by now, you would have thought but I suppose, they'd forgotten you know, him. And I, I just think you know people need something to look forward to, you know, and people need something to lift their spirits and. I think Twitter in particular, uh, people look down their nose at other people, you know, and, and a lot of the, a lot of the criticism comes from people that have no problem jumping on a bus in Letterkenny, mm. getting a ferry in Belfast, getting a, a, another bus and um, watching Celtic play, for example, you know, and they'll yeah. do that twice a month or something at great expense or go and watch the same football team every single week or whatever it is. Uh, and, um, you know, if this is what gives people joy... Go for it. That's what I say. Oh, a hundred percent. And in fairness, he priced his tickets really reasonably. Yes, I mean, 
Yeah, I know, so funny. The 15 but, cents, uh, very important for you. <laughs> they, he priced them very reasonably. <laughs> it's not my fault. I didn't price them. That's what they are for the seated when they put in all their costs. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to get caught like the last time. The last time I was working in a different radio station and I, I must have had about 35 tickets in yeah, my I, name. I, I mean, I better put a bit of context to this and I have no problem with by the way. But Fanula, thankfully, because I was working as well at the time, secured the tickets for me and told me that they're 88 euro and 15 cents. And I, I had a chuckle and I understand that, but I just yeah. thought, could you not have rounded it down? Yeah, if I was going to do anything, I'd round it up. The last time. <laughs> You're no, so tight. I know. I totally am. Because you know what happened the last time is, like I said, I was working in different... Those 15 cents sum up. Well, because what happened to me was I went and I gave back everybody's money the, the last time round, took me the whole thing, and for some reason... I still can't get the maths to work out. I was down a tenner. I was like, I don't understand how Garth Brooks owes me a tenner. And oh, I'm good right. at maths. I was well, really annoyed by it. So, uh, yes, it is. I so, it's it. exciting. It's five nights. And obviously, the local residents have, have their concerns and what have you. But look at... Uh, oh, no, and I appreciate if you're living there, it's not the easiest thing to have that many people walking to and through. You can't make an omelette without breaking eggs. Yeah, I have to say, though, it, just to be mean about the hotel people, it's some, like if you're going to be booking hotels, ring around and do not take the prices drive out of Dublin a bit further and yeah. because I mean some of the hotels went for four and five and went up to four and five hundred euros doubled and tripled their rates yeah. you don't and mind people before, making a few pounds but don't take the that was way. before the dates the dates were provisionally announced it, as soon but, as the planning permission was exactly, given but that, that's the correct immediately term. Yeah. the prices went up so yeah. it wasn't necessarily about we're down to our last two or three rooms yeah no they do, and like as I said Fine. You throw fifty euros on it. Nobody's going to argue with you. It's a you know we all know people cash it, but you double the price of your hotel room. I think that's just taking yeah, and it. triple in some cases. Yeah, that's just taking uh, it too far. Gareth is not your thing, is it, um, Michael? No, and I do like a lot of American country. To be fair, I do listen to a lot of things, but he, he just doesn't work for me. I don't have any of his albums, nor do I intend to get them. And again, I wish people well. I have great fun. I and just I, hope I, this I do. Is, uh, that achy breaky heart song is famous for. I just hope he brings the missus. Love her. Trisha Yearwood? Awesome. Oh, okay. I love... I See, I listen to her. I have a bunch of her CDs. Oh. Like, I listen to a load of Trisha Yearwood because when CMT, Country Music Television, was on RT... or was Well, it was on RT and then it was, it was on Sky during the 1990s. I watched that regularly and that expanded my music. I discovered Trish Yearwood, Mary Chapin Carpenter, mm. uh, Brooks and Dunn, nothing to do with Garth Brooks. So I, I listened to all those and I started getting the CDs. I love them. But... You, you can't like everything. You can't like everything. So grab right. okay. No, I'm just saying. It's that fine. You won't be with just, us. Yeah, we'll be having a good you. time without you. You do you. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. But Trisha was amazing. Yeah, she's fantastic. <laughs> and she's a chef now, isn't she? A cook. She does cookbooks and things. Possibly. Oh, I don't know. She could do it. Yes. Out, to be honest, I don't know enough about her except. <laughs> Right, back to telly. Mm. What do you want to talk about next, uh, Ms. Rabbit? Well, I've got two, and both of them, I don't really get it. So you can pick one or the other. Either The Beatles Get Back or The Lost Symbol, which is on Sky. Start with Beatles Get Back. Well, OK, so... The Another Be Disney Plus option, just for those that got that one ninety nine per month. Yeah, a lot of people, I think, yeah. signed up for it, just kind of trying to get the Christmas out yeah, of it exactly. and see what they'd get in that. And this is uh, a new... A music documentary, I suppose, is the best way to describe it. Now, I would not necessarily consider myself a Beatles fan. Not that I dislike the Beatles. Yeah. There's loads of their songs that I like, but I mean fan as in I wouldn't necessarily have a lot of information 100%. about them and that I'm kind of a exactly thing. exactly the same. Recognise uh, they're amazing, think they're absolutely brilliant, yeah, like a few of the songs, yeah. but I couldn't tell Some you what album they're Some of the stuff was awesome. Or, Some yeah. of the stuff... I don't get it. And and only know kind of superficially their story. What this is basically is, is they did uh, in 1969 before they, because uh, in 1969 they got together and they decided they hadn't been, they hadn't done a live concert in a year or two. And they decided that they would get together for two weeks and they would put together an album and a show within the two weeks. The Part of that was as well that they were going to do a documentary. From that, apparently, there's like 60 hours of footage. Peter Jackson, Lord of the Rings, uh, Moulin Rouge, that type of thing, he apparently is a massive Beatles fan. He got access to all of this and he has cut it together um, in a way that uh, gives three 
two hour documentaries well the first one is two and a half hours in total it'll end up being an eight hour run so the three documentaries are going to be right. eight hours so you'd want to be a fan of the Beatles first now apparently this all came out in a movie in the 70s but by the time the movie came out um, obviously not all the footage but the way the footage was cut by the earlier uh, director by the time the movie came out the Beatles had broken up mm-hmm. so people kind of took a lot of information from the thing and that's where they kind of based they had a lot of stuff about why they'd broken up and what happened and they kind of read stuff into the movie that according to Peter Jackson is not really the way it was at the time so I've watched the first one the first one went dropped uh, last night second one is today third one is tomorrow do you have to be a Beatles fan to enjoy it? I oh, it sounds so. quite. Uh, it sounds quite uh, forensic. Yeah. Well, what happens like, with it is it's not. Re- this is the, uh, what happens with it is is it's basically they're in a warehouse because what they did was they got this studio. Ringo Starr was making a movie, The Last Christian or something mm-hmm. I think it's called, and he was making a movie with Peter Sellers and the guy that was directing that had taken over Timewood or whatever in the UK and they took over one of the the sound studio rooms with sound stages that's it yeah so they're in this kind of a warehouse and they're just sitting around talking to each other smoking and drinking and in the meantime then they're writing songs Mm. now from this album um, there is a what I would consider good songs. Now, other people know more about the Beatles, but I mean, Let It Be is on this album. Uh, Get Back is on this album. There's a few other uh, others on it that, you know, even I would recognise, as I said, not not a massive Beatles fan. Um, so you kind of get to see them in their process, but it's an awful lot of them just talk, talking to each other and yeah. talking a lot of trash to each other. Mm. But it's an interesting dynamic. One, it's interesting to see how... They, they kind of developed the songs from very little ideas and how they changed so the words. So do you actually and, see them writing the songs and discussing what about Oh, God, yeah, they're sitting there, around with line? lines and they're, 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 they're sitting around oh, with their yeah. guitars and they're from absolute scratch and they they have, well... You know, Can you, you hear a song sort of becoming, oh, yeah, actually, that's the oh, riff Oh, yeah, and... Um, yeah, that's and quite interesting, but for, I don't know... For a lot of people, to, musicians, they'd be very interested because it's like... commit to the time, but... Paul McCartney is, uh, is saying to them, you go up up a thing down a thing you sing right. with me and we'll sing or then you say this line at a different time so it is all of that I could totally see Michael loving this he'd nerd out big time on it mm-hmm. <laughs> it's very but for me I kind of had to fast forward bits and pieces of it because wow, you were well, kind of like good. I mean, that's little bits in the middle I was kind of for, and, and also they have very strong uh you know, their Liverpool accents can be quite strong as well and they kind of mumbly sometimes. Right, hard to pick up some so of some of language. it's hard to pick up. But it's interesting to see, like, I mean, I, like they have a huge... The first is the first seven days because, as I said, it's over the two weeks. He's cut down the first seven days. They've left it on a massive cliffhanger which you kind of have to go back to. Even though I know the story of the Beatles. <laughs> I didn't know that this happened. In it, they talk about um, whether or not they should break up, whether they should or they shouldn't. Yoko Ono is sitting there constantly beside John. I mean, she must be... I I have new respect for her because obviously she can escape in her mind to a different place because you'd be bored out of your brain if you were there for... I mean, I couldn't do two and a half hours. I don't know how she did it all. She did it every day for a week. Yeah, but why is she there? Uh, You know... I know, but see, in this, uh, she never speaks. So she's just sitting there and he never... And himself and John... That's quite a disruptive presence to that process, I'd imagine. Well, any more than the fact that George Harrison has two, what I assume are Buddhist monks, sitting in the corner. I don't know, they're dressed... Okay, well, I didn't know about... I didn't know the Albright people with them. No, only... (laughs) This is what I'm saying. Paul seems to be the only one that's on his own. Yeah. The uh, Ringo's missus pops up. His missus at the time pops up. Uh, George has, t- like I said, I, 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 I don't want to say. I'm assuming they're Buddhist. You know what I mean? They're dressed in robes. I'm going to so the lay person. They that's could what they look exactly. They mean they may be they something mean. else. Um, and they kind of introduce them as to who they are and that kind of thing. There's loads of people around, uh, different sound people. It's all in the 60s and 70s. So between the hair and the glasses and that kind of thing is a good and laugh. And is it like wide-angle pan shot with Mike or are they actually filming the process with... Yeah, no, what they're doing is... You they're know, just, like the camera shot. Yeah, there's guys with cam. There's like two or three different camera angles with them. Friends, there's some fantastic it, it, shots. I have to say, the one thing I've gotten in this first hour yeah. and a half is that Paul McCartney and John Lennon seem to really genuinely have been very yeah. close and very good friends. Whereas I kind of thought that had, in my, again, brief nod... And... and uh, 
there was some access to this. Who, who released it to make this? I wonder, or who was holding on it? Because I'd imagine this was like you well, know, it belonged to the, it belonged to the Beatles, and they used to have which again I didn't know. They had a company called Apple Corp mm. that they used to put out their stuff on. It's this is all set now a year after Brian Epstein had passed away, and this and then they even talk about his passing and right. the impact that that's had on each of them and the lack of discipline and stuff. Which I, for me, and now I've said I'm only one third through it, but it does appear that that would have been the main reason why they broke so up. It just, I mean, as I say, whoever kept thought that like, we'll video this, it might be of some use sometime. Those decisions well, they were making a movie. They were making a movie documentary yeah. out of it, and what they just did was they just kept videoed everything. Okay. and like they have guys there when they want a certain sound, they don't. There's no such thing as the machine, so they bring in the guy and he builds it for them. Wow. So it's a it, musician, music people will be really into it. Peter Jackson's all about it. To me, I'm a, eight hours without the fast forward button will probably be too much for I me. Don't but think I don't think you can watch I'll, something and fast forward, though. I'm, I'm just going to have to say that to you. This you can, though, because it actually is a lot of them sitting around mumbling to each other <laughs> about stuff and giving out to each other and talking about, you know giving out to each other, oh, you're like a crowd of old ladies and all this kind of thing. And you're like, okay, fast forward this until you get to... So the Beatles the Get Back, it's on Disney Plus and uh, you've watched one and a bit, have you? No, no, the first one is two and a half hours. The, f- the first, the, the first episode, there's three episodes of it in total. The three oh, episodes right, are going to be eight right. hours. Okay. So the first episode is the first seven days. The next seven days, well, I'm, it's supposed to be two weeks, but maybe they ran over, I don't know. But the next... The next two then yeah. will combine together are going to be even longer because, as I said, in the end, it's eight hours long. Yeah, Michael, who do you think the audience for this is? It sounds pretty intense. Super fans, really, is it? Think, is it really yeah. super fans? Yeah, it sounds like it's into the nitty gritty. Um, if you only have a passing acquaintance with the Beatles, as I or do. Or if so you're under you guys... 40, maybe. I, well, sure, uh, um, I was going to say me, but then I remembered I'm not 50, under 40. I don't know. Like, <laughs> you know like... I, I mean, I didn't not enjoy it, but I couldn't have... It was a bit too much of it, right, if you know okay. what I mean. But I did imagine if you were a super say, fan, though. Imagine if you were. This is like this would be gold dust to a super fan. Well, that's not a broad that. audience, so that's kind of what I'm getting at. I mean, it is fantastic, mm. you know. Like, um, but I'm just wondering what its mass appeal might be. But anyway, okay. yeah. But now maybe well, there's listeners older than and me. I, actually, you know what? You haven't even watched it. You're fast forwarding through it, so I'm no, not sure I know. I didn't you. fast forward that much of it. Like, <laughs> I mean, I was a good hour and twenty minutes in it before I fast forwarded as well because I was like, <laughs> nice. so it's an eight-hour show or one hour fifteen minutes. Depends on who's watching it. <laughs> no, but I would be interested to see. I mean, technically, like all of this happened. The you know this film was originally released the year before I was born. So maybe if there's somebody that's sixty or over that was actually around and remembers. I mean, watching some of the Beatlemania footage is still shocking. Just to think how crazy people went. You know, girls. That's what it's like outside Michael's front door. Pass. <laughs> I have Can't heard that. Can't disagree with you. I have heard they that. They call it Michael Mania. <laughs> girls Can't passing out. The, the guards having to hold them back and stop them from rushing in. And yet, Greg, despite that, I still can't get a date to go to the theatre <laughs> and see the enemy with with me without being stood up. I was. I can't believe that you did not. Did you, you did not sense that I was ill and come to me with lipstick. <laughs> So let's just let's just return that back. You know, I'll have to take streets. a break to to, to, <laughs> to, to to wipe my tears. We'll be back with the weather and a quick goodbye from our panel after these. Today's nine till noon show is brought to you in association with Ulster Tires. Get your tires winter ready. Drop in to Ulster Tires in Letterkenny and Bally Buffet today. At Christmas, it always feels so much better to give than to get. The best gift you can give this year is a vaccine to the most vulnerable people on our planet. UNICEF needs your support to deliver 3 billion vaccines. Go to unicef.ie to give a vaccine now because it's not over for anyone until it's over for everyone. Let's give COVID the jab this Christmas. Visit unicef.ie. Niall lives on a hill, a very steep hill, which is great for the calf muscles. But when it comes to squeezing in and out of that parking space between the neighbour's pride and joy, Niall begins to worry. I wonder if they use recycled plastic to make all the recycling bins. In the new Dacia Duster with automatic gearbox and hill start assist, at least hills are nothing to worry about. And from only €45 per week on the road, nor is the price. Don't worry, be Duster. Offer made under a higher purchase agreement. Terms and conditions apply. See Dacia.ie. 
Dreaming of the perfect gift this year for your someone special. Why not give the gift of choice with the McElhenney's gift card? From luxury fragrances to designer clothing, your perfect Christmas gift awaits. Open Sundays from 1.30 to 6pm or shop online with free next day delivery at McElhenney's.com. Some days the couch just calls to us. Take a seat. Grab the remote. My cushions are extra cosy today. And while we all want to get off the couch to set a healthier routine, not knowing how to start can feel overwhelming. Healthy Ireland is a trusted source for easy to follow tips and advice. Like getting a friend involved with your healthy habits so they'll be able to motivate you on those tougher days. Search Healthy Ireland and get set for life this winter. From Healthy Ireland, a Government of Ireland initiative supporting health and well-being for everyone and helping us off our couches. Hi, Theresa Mannion here with a road safety alert for bad weather. Black ice is one of winter's biggest hazards and is hard to see. Watch out for sheltered or shaded areas on the road, under trees and near high walls. Visit rsa.ie from the Road Safety Authority. For fantastic Black Friday deals, visit Rossview Interiors Letterkenny, where there's amazing savings on a large range of sofas, in stock and ready for delivery before Christmas. There's also huge savings on bedroom and occasional furniture, dining sets and Hollywood mirrors with dressing tables, the perfect Christmas gift. That's right now at Rossview Interiors, the home of better deals, at Rossview Business Park, Letterkenny, just off the Polestar Roundabout. See rossviewinteriors.com. Highland Radio weather updates with National Fuels, delivering home heating oil to Letterkenny and the surrounding areas at competitive prices. National Fuels, 9137 400. So a cold windy day with temperatures of 6 to 9 degrees. There'll be widespread showers, heavy at times and falling as sleet and snow over the hills and mountains. Northwest to north winds will be fresh to strong and gusty and will reach gale force on coast. And that is it. Bye bye, Fanula. I can't understand where the time has gone. See you next Friday. Absolutely. Michael, Enjoy the thank weekend, toy yeah, show. you too, Michael. Thank you. Have a good weekend, guys. Uh, keep her lit, as they say. Thanks very much indeed. Mm-hmm. We're back with you on Monday. Enjoy your 